The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello and welcome. Obviously, I am not Pat McAfee. It's AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat. He is down in Houston about to uh, commentate for SmackDown, a couple of pay- a pay-per-view, I believe, on Sunday. And I talked right over the spot that Pat <laughs> never speaks over. Oh, yeah. So that was for you, Pat. I know you're probably watching down in your hotel. We will bring you in in a minute. But I made the trek over here to India. I hope I'm looking at the right camera, right? Right? You're COVID good. Yeah. Yep. But obviously, Ty Schmidt is here. Gumpy is here. COVID Cowboy has a big softball game tomorrow, right? Thank you. You go to the cages yet? Home. Probably going to get rained out, so it's going to be awesome. Oh, seven no. Seven hours home. Going to get rained out. I'll drive back. Let's have like a seven-hour delay, and yeah. then we'll get to you. Obviously, Foxy's in the back. Nick Moraldo, Jay McIntyre. I think uh, Billy <laughs> Tubes is back there. <laughs> McIntyre. <laughs> I think you should change it to Mac- McIntyre because Pat's trying to claim the number one McAfee, you know, after, was it John? Yep, yeah. John yeah. McAfee. Like I said, I enjoy being the bottom rung of the McAfee ones. family. I don't mind, you know. I'll, I'll stay McAfee. Hey, I think you're top rung I of the McIntyre family <laughs> the McIntyre and the McAfee sure. family. Yeah. But you know what? Let's not wait around because I know Pat's about to get kicked out of his room down in Houston. He cannot get the late checkout. So, Foxy, if we can cut it down to Houston hotel room with Pat and I believe Connor is with him, correct? Oh, hey, boys. Hey. hey. Show's going great. You know, open about, what, five to ten seconds late there, Fox. Mm. Uh, AJ, right through the beat drop, you're wearing a suit. Okay, you look good. And Jason McIntyre is a human in the sports media world already. Okay, don't need to do that to my brother. On, Connor, you look fantastic. Thanks, Pat. You know what? You look great, too. No, you look no, good. No, no, no. You look good. Not as good as AJ Hawk oh, wearing a full suit. Come on, that guy today. Are you kidding me? Is that every day now? It has to be. Oh, are you wearing suits every day now, AJ? You look amazing. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Houston's hot. We'll have a great time, and we are going to get kicked out of our hotel, so we can't wait to watch and listen as we can here, bub. Well, I tell you what is hot is this studio. I don't know if you can see me (laughs) profusely sweating. (laughs) It is blazing down here. It's usually like 48 degrees. Pat keeps these like Letterman. He's got to keep the studio nice and cool so he can really, his brain works the best, but... I'll tell you what, it's about 95 in here when it comes to me. I don't know how you guys feel. I mean, I feel okay. AJ was pitting out early before he even walked into the studio. So, I mean, yeah. It's hot in the kitchen, AJ. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's something about, it's hot in the kitchen. It's something about when you to. wear, uh, when I wear dress clothes, or I wear something nice, I instantly just start sweating. There's something like mentally that I got to find a way to get over, right? Well, normally when you dress up, you have to go to an event that is going to be absolutely fucking terrible. (laughs) So I think that is kind of the mental part of it all. You know, like, okay, not only do I have to wear this Klan suit that is too hot. All right. Not only do I have to wear this Amish thing around my neck to make people think that I am more professional than they are looking like a stooge in a clan okay, it. but the uh what i'm saying is i think it's not just the physical thing you're wearing i think it's also the mental thought why are you dressed like that i think you are doing an incredible service to that desk you're making it look professional everything like that this desk is, is awful <laughs> this is getting it's getting tighter and tighter like i was here how many months ago uh, four maybe. I, don't know. I walked in and the first thing I said to everybody, like, "Are you serious? This desk? Like it's getting worse. There's less and less room to even move." Like I, if I end up <laughs> knocking all these sheets down, please don't be upset, Pat, because it may happen. It's already about to topple because you have seven thousand sheets right here along with everything else in well, the world. Hey, that's your guess? Is that your guess? Because we do have a giveaway <laughs> yeah. going on with those sheets. Oh. It's seven thousand. You're the one who has an eye on it. You know, everybody on the internet is wondering how many sheets are in there. The I will say that desk, and the boys will attest to this back there. And since Connor's here with me, I guess he could do it. Yeah, Connor can pop in. Of course. I've even said that that desk has become, are you okay? I need Jesus. a towel. I need a towel. <laughs> towel. Oh, at the mouth. <laughs> Take the suit off, dude. No you way, man. I'm you professional. You were... Huh? I'm professional. I'm trying to bring some class to this studio, to this seat. You, know, it's, you got to figure oh, it out. This guy. Out of here. This guy. Come on. Ty. We'll Ty, what is going on? Connor's you know, you've got a chance shoulder. to. 
meet Green Bay Packer folklore. Mm -hmm. You know, all time leading tackler, all time leading passer. I think Ty, you you've been a great owner of the Packers. Ha has, Thank has you, it? absolutely. Thank you. I'm sitting here, by the way, because the camera, whenever it splits, I got you know we got full catch, but I can't. And it's also <laughs> nice to be next to this guy. But Ty, when AJ walks in and says. This studio, this office is normally despicable. I need to clean it up a little bit and puts that full Klein suit on and walks in there. What are your immediate thoughts about a hero, a guy that you probably had a poster of up in the bedroom whenever you were growing up? Yeah, had the fat head. I mean, it hurts, obviously. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I've come to know AJ, you know, pretty decently over the, the last, what, two years, three years or whatever. But, I mean, it was, a, it was a cheap shot. There's no question about it. Luckily, he has not pissed on the floor yet, <laughs> we which know we know he loves doing that every time he comes here. So I think that'll kind of be like the final you know, knife in the back if that is to happen today. I mean, absolute blasphemy, Pat. You know that. Whoever did piss all over Watch your floor, that. it was not hey. me. What? Watch that saber sword. Careful. Dude. Why do you have this? For the, for the serious yeah, listeners, I know you, Pat doesn't refer to you very often. I'm holding a big old <laughs> scepter, I believe they call it, that he had tucked away in the corner of his office. I will say, serious listeners, I appreciate you every day, even more so today. But to be completely candid, we make all of our money and all of our reference points are often numbers that do not involve you because Sirius gives us no numbers at all. So I'm not saying personally it is a zero, but every business move that is made, the serious number is at zero. So we have no idea if people actually listen. But what AJ is holding is a sword straight out of Game of Thrones, I think. Zito oh, bought yeah. that at an auction mm -hmm. straight out of Game of Thrones. It was a gift to me, and now you're mocking it, obviously. It was real? Wait, this is real? Like, this was used in the show? On set, yeah. Yeah, by the Dothraki. They oh, actually like severed Rogers. a head with that. <laughs> it was about as realistic as the guy that uh, they said was Aaron Rodgers on that episode, where he was running all duck-footed. Hey, he was running. To the <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the best part of that whole thing. Do we know where he was? Has he ever said it? I know we asked him, and he got mad at a lot of people that thought that that unathletic looking some bitch that went into the alley and then died was him. But did we ever find out where he was? We never did. I mean, he he tried to tell us where he was, I guess, but I don't know. Like, I have no clue where he was. Like, what did what he else do? Does he tell? Is there any Connor, behind the scenes? Aaron told you has Aaron told you anything? Aaron hasn't really talked to me lately. I did call him <laughs> last night just to kind of check in. Hey, Aaron, we're in Houston. It's great down here. Good I guy. don't know what you're thinking about Good Texas, guy. but it's great. You Good know, guy. I was just hoping he was doing well, really. Yeah, so he doesn't really talk to you much. How about you, guy wearing a suit, hosting a sports show? Have you heard anything from this guy? You're breaking news. You're on Get Up. Okay. Oh. AJ Hawk says da 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 da. You were on Colin Cowherd's show yesterday. He didn't give us credit, but he did give you credit. You might have mm -hmm. said it on his show, to be honest, because you have been saying the same thing this entire time, and it's just getting recycled as breaking news. Do we know it is today today? Is this why? Did you put the suit on <laughs> because you're breaking big time news today? You wanted to be professional, Big J, maybe get a raise or a job somewhere else? Uh, no, I'm not looking for employment anywhere else, Pat. I'm very happy here. I, I love working oh, with you yeah! and the boys. Yeah. I absolutely. I'm news. That's good news. I want nothing to do anywhere. I'm not looking for anything else. I, this is where I feel like my home is. So thank you and the boys for that. I don't have any yeah. information. Yes. Hey, welcome home, AJ. Thank you, AJ. Welcome good to home. be home, AJ. <laughs> good to be home. Did never thought at 37 looking at this stuff like this would be my home. This is where I found my <laughs> broadcasting home. But you know what? I appreciate it, man. It's fun. This is. I, I think you're doing a great thing. Well, it says more about you than me. I want to let you know that that statement you last made there, you're trying to take a shot at me. You took no. a shot at the mirror, pal. But I will say we are lucky to have you alongside us whenever you decide to show up, which is most days, unless it is a minivan vacation across the country with mm. the family, a mm -hmm. trip to the beach, a golf <laughs> outing, whatever. You live your life. We are very thankful that more often than not, you drop in here and give us absolute gems and credibility on the defensive side of the ball and all that but you stepping up and hosting from indianapolis today and we're fucking with you because you do look ridiculous i have no <laughs> idea what you're doing but i can't thank you enough for this aj and i think today's show is probably what are you doing a candle don't light anything on fire you hear me on, put dude. the candle everything i just said i take back I, I appreciate what you're doing <laughs> if you burn that place down it's going to be a problem <laughs> i'm just lighting the candle to create some good ambiance in here you really get a good it's already hot in. enough what are you adding flames uh, for hell? don't worry about it. i like to i like to see how i can handle some adversity so Trying to make it a little bit warmer. Hey, you're in Houston, Pat. Uh, any sightings of Jack Easterby? Are you going to have lunch? What are we doing? Cocktail hour, maybe? Okay. Fascinating you say that because I may or may not have a microphone to the entire arena tonight, I'm being told. Oh. How am I not 
going to mention Jack Easterby. That is that is kind of because as soon as we got to town, we drove around Houston. Pretty dead, by the way. Yeah, really. It is a pretty dead downtown. This is early. We might not be. This is the business district, I believe, is how Zito described it. But there wasn't anybody on the streets really anywhere or anything. So we're trying to get some tips on who goes where and what. I guess when we get kicked out of the hotel here in a bit, we'll be able to do that. The only reference point I have for this city, though, is Crip Walking Jesus pastor guy jack no. easterby yep what a burger whoa yeah what they went to Whataburger last what? night shut down and, and other than that i just know that it's the fourth largest city in america it's beautiful but this place is shut down we haven't seen anybody aj is it you mean shut down because of covid no i think it's shut down because like so in charlotte you ever been to charlotte aj yeah so charlotte shuts down like six o'clock we played mm. in the uh Meineke car care bowl down there against um north carolina chase rice team nicks in them and what we realized is, aside from this one area, the rest of the city shut down at like six o'clock. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Houston, very similar. Whataburger shuts down at two thirty p.m. It's ten a.m. to two thirty p.m. Wow! Just for people that are working, everything else shuts down. We might be in—I don't know if this is the whole city of Houston, but where we're at, dry. Yeah, it's definitely the financial area because when we, me and Zito were walking through earlier, there was a lot of people in suits like AJ walking around. <laughs> Not to mention there's a green tea shortage oh, yeah. in the city hey, at the moment. Not that, good. That fucked me up this morning. <laughs> what, your, your Starbucks, they didn't have your gigantic uh, ice cream teas? Nope, not any of them. We went to one. They said, hey, try this place. Went to the other. This place said, hey, by the way, no Starbucks have green tea in this city. We don't got any of it. We had to find the Nucky Thompson of green tea. Couldn't fucking find them. Haven't nope. been in town long enough. But what I'm saying is I don't know enough about Houston. Haven't been able to learn enough since getting here because we haven't really run into anybody. My only reference point is Jack Easterby. So I hope I run into him or he is going to get quite a pop tonight, hopefully, in that arena. I don't know how they feel about him. We're going to learn quick. Hey, you know when Jack Easterby is is seawalking all over the place giving his his beautiful sermons, he looks like I don't know if you've ever had an MCL situation, Pat, but we we just caught news that Tom Brady played last season with a torn MCL, end up getting surgery to fix this after the year. Do you have any experience with this with MCLs? I think people get confused between MCL, ACL, PCL, all of this stuff. You only the ACL is really what gets talked about the most. What is this with the MCL? Do you have any idea? Okay, so AJ, I'm happy we're getting to talk about this because we're two dudes who probably have eight to nine knee surgeries combined between us. I don't know how many you had. How many did you have? Uh, I think five or six. Jesus. So I had four. So we got 10 knee surgeries between the two of us. So we happen to know a little bit about the knee. The good thing for me is none of the ligaments ever were damaged for me. And that's what the L's are at the end of the ACL, MCL, PCL, all this shit, right? So I never, I had meniscus issues and patella issues. And the meniscus is like uh, a surgery where they go in and it's, uh, what's it, arthroscopic? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Scope is what it's called. It's just mm -hmm. quick, though. They go in, they kind of clean it up, and then they go out. It's like it could be anywhere from four weeks to six weeks recovery because there isn't really any structural damage. When the ligaments are damaged, like the MCL, the PCL, the ACL, that's a big fucking deal. The MCL, I think, is the easiest to kind of get around. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know it well enough. And there are some people that don't need their ACLs. There are some people in the NHL that don't even have an ACL. And then there's some bodies that most bodies, as soon as the ACL is gone, you can't do anything so the ligaments are much different than everything else aj do you have any ligament structural damage or was yours mostly meniscus cleanup chipping and everything like that well it was all of that but it started with my pcl i told my pcl my senior year in high school that's what goes like front and back i guess and helps stabilize so i i was a punter i think i've told this in the show ran a fake punt my first game my senior year planted my right leg right at the first down marker dude went low blasted my knee straight back tore my pcl oh. so because hold on of, hold on aj what? Yeah. What other positions did you play? I played running back, linebacker, punter. Kicked off a little bit, but had to kick off once after a touchdown run. I was dead tired. I yanked that thing about 12 yards, but it went 60 rows deep out of bounds. <laughs> that's going to happen, and that's bad field position. That's not what you want at all. But did you get injured in any of those other positions? No, I don't think I did. Yeah, so my injury was when I was the punter. You're right. What a grueling, grueling position. I got hurt playing punter, too. Hey, listen, it happens to the best of us, but go on. I'm sorry I interrupted you there. Punter is a position you can get got. I think that gets forgotten about. But the PCL front to back, MCL is lateral, and then the ACL is through the middle. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think. I don't know exactly how the ACL – like, 
the MCL is inside, the LCL is outside, lateral, obviously. Yeah, ACL is the big one that you really need the most. I guess that you have to usually get fixed, even though you hear stories about people playing with torn ACLs. And for some pe some reason, some people can handle it more than others. Uh, but with Tom, I guess you can do – I've seen it. You, I'm sure you've been around guys, Pat, that play with a torn MCL. They do like a tape job. There's some special tape job to try to stabilize your knee as much as you possibly can. And then Tom wore a knee brace on top of that. Yeah, the stabilization also, I think there is a – yeah, I think the stabilization uh, stabilization also takes away from the pain that potentially happens from a uh, a little bit of a bobble, not just like physical performance ability with the stabilization, but also I think keeping it tight is also getting away from some of the pain. Ve I, he had to have a painful season. Let's not this is not something I do not want to undersell this. It is not cool to have anything torn in any part of your body. Rob Ninkovich, I think you mentioned yeah. this early Connor. Rob Ninkovich talked about how the MCL like this is something that you can get around. He was more impressed with uh, whenever he busted open his thumb. When yeah. was that? That was uh, in the day before the AFC Championship when Rex Burkhead was taking a hand off. He busted open his thumb. He had to get stitches. Throwing they didn't know hands. what was happening. He's throwing hand. He, he still went out to play. So I'm not saying that Tom Brady isn't incredibly tough, and he's 40-plus years old dealing with all this, makes, which makes it even more impressive. But there have been people in the past that have gone through full seasons, I think, with torn MCLs. It is not cool, the amount of management that has to be involved with that, especially with being a quarterback, being Tom Brady, learning a new system insane more more power to him but that was wild to hear and then he wins the fucking super bowl alex guerrero has to be like hey plotability we're plotable motherfuckers out <laughs> winning super bowls and stuff new offenses new homes covid what don't what? give a damn give us a torn mcl we don't care eat avocado ice cream you win a goddamn super bowl that's pretty much what happened there aj hey Diggs, what about you i know you have a big game tomorrow any worry that you may stretch one of those mcls it's almost guaranteed. I'm not going to stretch at all because I figured that's not going to do anything at this point. I, I ain't never seen Secretariat stretch. Exactly. Al Harris hey, used to say that. Hey, you, think, you think those guys are greatest generation when they're running across the no. beaches in Normandy? They're worried about pulling fucking hamstrings? Absolutely you not. Know, like Brown's guy. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely want two not. world wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Diggs, though, honestly, though, where's your head at? We're, we, I know we won't spend a bunch of time on it. I don't want to freak you out. The weather's going to be fine. Don't worry. It's not going to be a rain out. I know you're, you're quietly hoping for that. <laughs> Maybe take some BP and then just call it a day. That's what you may hope. Where is your head at, though? Have you, have you been sleeping at night? Yeah, yeah. I feel really good. I feel like probably going to get team MVP if I had to take a guess. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I feel really good about the game, Age. I like oh, it. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like AJ, yeah. he's saying there's no chance this game's played, huh? I don't know. What, is the weather going to get really bad here? I know it's raining now. You can see it on my jacket, some of the rain. It's like a 60% chance of rain tomorrow. Oh, then you're good. 40% is not. So yeah. you're, we're all Thank set. You. Don't worry. Have an opt you know, Look at it like hey, an optimist. 40% is a high percentage. Uh, so, Why did Diggs say he's going to be team MVP? Is this a whole new Diggs? Did you go to sleep last night and have a full trans? Because I thought he was saying that because he knew it was going to get rained out. Yeah. So then he can kind of do his whole thing. There's a chance this game happens and he thinks he's going to be team MVP. Let's go. This is a much different Diggs Come today. On, Here we go. Hey, 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 go. We go. Oh. Well, you know me. I have to get every single side possible out into the air so that if one of them does happen i can say told you so really that's why the hammer down record is the way it is yeah uh, <laughs> no matter what. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. so much sense now don't drag oh, don't that you start. into the hammer down thing I'm, I'm just telling you what people would say i didn't say that i'm just saying as soon as that came out of your mouth digs i was like oh people are gonna say that's probably what's going on over there but that, I'm I'm a, that isn't that Pat, I'm okay with you saying it, but that parrot on your shoulder, if he says it, I'm going to be fucking pissed, okay? <laughs> this actual parrot? Uh, yeah, what? yeah, that one. What are you talking about, Tony? <laughs> I think you're going to win the MVP too, dude. I'm locked in on you hitting eight dingers on Saturday, you brother. That, you with that sell the Buckos team shirt on with him sitting on your shoulder like that <laughs> is the best. Well, that's what we are, dude. We're the pops, bro. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, hey, is that a shirt you sell that you're wearing? Yeah, for the time being, I think this one will get cease and desisted pretty quick. We Wait, gotta, will they come at you for that? I assume yeah. <laughs> they got bigger. I mean, we haven't problems. really marketed it much, but if you find it, you get it. And our store is—I mean, you got to have good 
day and a half or so to scroll through that thing to find this. So <laughs> if somebody finds this, they can definitely buy it. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to last, but we have a couple others we're, we're ready to get sued for, too, pretty soon. Oh, They're yeah. kind of sitting in the chamber. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm curious with Connor, though. I know, Connor, you're a you diehard Patriots fan. With Tom Brady, you hear this news about the MCL and how he played through it and everything. <laughs> are you excited? Are you saying, hey, that's just Tom being Tom? Do you think it's overblown? Like, wh where are you on this? I mean, I don't know, Hawk. You think I'm happy that Tom Brady's legend grows more as he's a Buccaneer? Like, what do you think you should this be. is? No, you should I'm be not happy, happy Connor. about it. Foxy's rooting for Matthew Stafford out with the Rams. Like, I assume yeah, you're rooting for Tom Brady. He's never you're witnessed a, a Super Bowl. He's never witnessed an AFC championship. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about falling from the top of the mountain, Hawk. So, no, I'm not happy about it. But, hey, you got to respect it. It's cool as hell. He does – I mean, the laceration, definitely much more difficult than the MCL. I'll say it. I know he's thinking it. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the legend grows. Unfortunately, it's with the Buccaneers. Connor. What are you going to do? Say la vie. That's life, Hawk. How, how about hey, being man. happy for the guy? How about being thankful for the guy for what he did for your happiness Yeah, Detroit stinks, up? though. Like, yeah, that's you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get yeah, it, Foxy. I, 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 what the thing is, and I, no, you can stay. You can stay. <laughs> I, I, I think the thing about it, Foxy, is like Detroit, you guys didn't win anything. You yeah, guys didn't win anything matter. with I'm him. I'm still so thankful. You, I'm still thankful for the guy. He yeah, but you'll be happy happiness. for him when he goes on and wins because people will always say he was at Detroit. He was at Detroit for so long, and then he finally went on to win. What he's talking about is Tom's legend is just continuing to grow in Tampa. And as somebody that watched a guy get cut and then go to another place, have success, legend grow more, now he has become the face of that city, and you only see him in that uniform. And I'm talking about Peyton Manning right now. That mm -hmm. happened to Peyton Manning. And, I mean, Tom, that's the only close comp that yes. they have in New England is the Peyton situation as of relevancy. That's what he's talking about. So I understand. I think we all understand why you're happy for Matthew Stafford mm. to have a little bit of success. You know, <laughs> a little <laughs> guy threw for 400 yards a game and like lost somehow. Yeah, still went four and 12. How do they lose? But I think what he's worried about is Tom never being remembered as a Patriot ever. Fair enough. I mean, I guess I think Bruce Arians doesn't get enough credit for how he's handled the whole Tom Brady situation. Now he made it all about Tom. Like, Hey, we're doing whatever Tom wants to do. Yeah, he was publicly, he would criticize him early on, especially if he made bad throws or things didn't happen. But then he also, like, all he did was pump Tom up and take his ego out of it. And I think some people need to, if you look around the league, if you know that, like, hey, we're, it's a quarterback-driven league. If we have a guy that is possibly the GOAT, let's just let him have the reins. This is what we're doing here. And I think B.A. deserves more credit for that. Uh, and you might be speaking for a guy you were jumping off docks with there just a second ago, but I think what happened in Tampa with Tom and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with what Tom came out and said, like, oh, it's nice to know that there's another way of doing things. Every quarterback that was potentially in a situation that they were not exactly thrilled with, that saw what was going on with Patrick Mahomes, that even saw what was going on with Jared Goff and the Rams before they paid Goff and they were loading everybody up around him, that caused a ripple effect around the NFL that I think we will have to – you know, kind of see the fallout from for the next couple of years. Russell Wilson, what? Had time to Sean Watson, who what? knows what's going to happen there. Obviously, with his legalities, we'll check in. I get we'll have our boots on the ground. Yeah. We got our boots on the ground to find out how that whole thing's going. Hopefully, justice is served one way or the other there. And then, obviously, with Aaron and every it's everybody saw what happened with Tom. Now, could have done this when Peyton went to Denver and they gave him the entire keys to the fucking building, the offense the city, the everything, you know what I mean? But I think with Tom happening here and how everybody knew how New England was with Bill and how they had success and then also seeing success when a, an entire organization buys in around your quarterback, I mean, it is – we're going to see that, AJ, to your point. I think we're going to see it continue to go like, hey, we got a guy. We should take care of him. If not, he should – very justfully so be i'm out of here i won't go somewhere else it, it seems like it's turning more towards like the nba where the stars have the power and you know like hey we're gonna craft it around them there's only a couple though like nba there's what one two guys every team and some teams have three to four i mean the really NFL, there's what? only like four guys five guys in the league okay so like what pat mahomes aaron Rodgers, tom brady who else russ russ, russ is up there well, and who knows what's going on in this city, Deshaun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he, you know, because Deshaun, before the very, very, very widespread, I mean, that was 
that was huge. But before that, the amount of stats that were coming out about what he led the league in and how he did and everything like that, I think he was a guy without all the legal issues that are definitely severe and definitely deserve some real attention. Without that, I think he's potentially one of those guys. But I think there's only like four or five, five, maybe six at the most at any given time. Don't you, AJ? Yeah, I think you're, you're right. And I'm going back to the show yesterday. We had Ian Rappaport on. Remember, Ian said – he seemed pretty confident that Deshaun was going to play this year. And I don't know what if he said all? play for the Texans, but he felt he seemed pretty confident. And I was like, I don't know, man. What are we two weeks out barely? And we have heard nothing from either side. So how could he feel confident that Deshaun's going to play this year? Yeah, what's that all about? And we pressed him a little bit. Like, have you heard anything? He was like, no, I just, you know, with this. And he's starting to post again. And Mula Gates is putting photos of him up there. And he's saying he's going to play. I was... I was very startled by that. I'm like, how? Like, this has to be the fastest interstate lawsuit proceedings in the history, yeah. then, if that's going to happen. And I don't think Roger Goodell necessarily – he said a suspension or whatever. Well, a suspension can't happen until they know what happens, right? And that maybe in the past uh, they would have just kind of done their own due diligence. But then the Ray Rice situation happens and other situations happen where more evidence kind of gets overturned later and later and the NFL kind of ends up holding their, you know, their shit in their hand almost at that thing. I don't think Roger Goodell wants to do that again. This is a very, I don't know, whatever Ian's saying has to be coming from a place that knows more than the rest of us, right? Has to, AJ. Yeah, I mean, Ian is, he is dialed in. With, he has his, his ear to the ground with every agent out there, every somebody in every front office, players. He has a ton of sources, so... Yeah, there's stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. Eventually, I guess we will, but they better take care of it quick. I mean, the season's starting soon. When you think of all these situations, what's Aaron going to do in Green Bay? What's Houston going to do with the quarterback position? Hey, we have deadlines coming, so something has to happen now. He said multiple teams are still interested in him too, right? And there's no way a team would be willing to trade for him unless they had assurances that like, he wasn't either going to wind up on the commissioner's exempt list. Like, they, they would need to know, like, hey, this is all going to go away and he's going to be able to play the first game, right? Well, he's on the commissioner's exempt list right now, right? I think so. I think he is. Which just means it's like, it's pending. Like it just means like, hey, we're checking things out. I guess right. And then Florio, and I think what you're saying, Dr. I don't know, Doctor Florio, Florio is, as Gumpy calls him. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Hey Gump, <laughs> hey Gump, US last night put on show against oh, Martin. Yeah. 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 Six one. Hey, I saw that. Good man, Canada on Sunday night. That's the one to win the group. All right, hopefully we'll bring in our studs to put alongside that young bunch that can play. There's a couple guys on that team that stink, but we got a couple guys that are real good there. Congrats to all of them, by the way, getting national team appearances. That was my dream as a child. So congrats to all of them getting a chance to play and put on a performance. But what I think Florio put out something that there should be – I don't know if it was about him or somebody else, but it's real. This was happening with Antonio Brown. We never really heard from Goodell on what his thoughts were, and I think Goodell was legitimately waiting for the off-the-field stuff to get settled, and then he made his announcement, and there was really no communication, so nobody knew what was going to happen. Was he going to get suspended? Was he going to get this? And then once there was a little bit of clarity on the situation, then teams got interested, then the Buccaneers got interested. With Deshaun, like, will the commissioner have to say something and come out and say, like, this is where we're at. He won't be able to do this. We're still investigating. There's still a lot to go through, so we don't know how many games we should suspend him. He's on the exemption list. Like how I don't I just don't know how that all happens in three weeks. I don't know how that all happens in three weeks, especially with everything else going on in the world, especially the Delta Strain. Whoa, whoa. In an SI article from two days ago, it says the league could place him on a commissioner exempt list. So they have not yet. Okay, but so if, you, if you're if you're the Eagles or the Dolphins, if he's out this year and you get to see what Tua and Jalen Hurts are, that's almost better. Then you can make a trade if he if he does in fact not play this year. Yeah, but then what happens if mid season? Right. Uh, also, if they stink, then then there's no credibility for or trade value to them. Sure. Well, I guess. Hey, Pat. Connor, I need you guys to to pipe down for a quick second. We're going to take our first break of the show. When we get back, I don't know if you've heard this, Pat. There's there's some uh, some absolute stud former players that are talking about what they would do in the current NFL, and they have they think their numbers would 
skyrocket. So we may chat about that a little bit afterwards. We'll jump out to the five hour energy uh, phone line. Don't call it a hotline, right, Pat? Phone line. No, hotline's hour. something else. Hotline means you're definitely getting through. Phone line means maybe. Yeah, we're waiting for that five hour, or we're waiting for the, the hotline sponsor to step up, <laughs> step to the table. So if you're out there and you want to sponsor the hotline, we're available, right? Uh, yeah, but it, I mean, not for nothing, Five Hour Energy's paid a lot of fucking money to get on this. Right? No, Five Hour <laughs> Energy's just, great. We, we love them. They may even take over the hotline. Them. <laughs> they may take over the hotline soon, but we'll be right back. Pat, we'll chat about some of that. We'll also saying, talk like, about we, the, hey, talk some colors. Not, hey, listen, AJ, you can't come on this show wearing that suit, swinging around the unduffable the way you are, oh, yeah. and then just start <laughs> selling stuff. That, that is not, listen. I'm trying to bring some revenue, some more revenue. I know you have a ton coming in, but hey, you can always Don't more. need it. Don't want it. <laughs> don't want it unless it's the right people. You know, we don't want to oversell this thing and work with people we hate. But AJ, I'll tell you what. With the way you look, I think this guy can get a billion dollar deal done. For a thousand us. percent. He I might be on Wall Street tomorrow. Oh my God! I didn't even think about. It. Is this the Wolf of Sports Talk right here? <laughs> oh my God! AJ, thank you, man. Do all the selling you want, pal. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, we'll be right back. Serious Channel 82. This is the Pat McAfee Show. We'll see you in a little bit. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But hey, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and no hard feelings and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here uh, it, it was a great great gesture a lot of room for me and Marshall we were throwing the football <laughs> so, pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty cool experience pretty cool father-son weekend by the way as he's moving from event to event right now <laughs> you are the best dude where are you headed right now I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's house. <laughs> <laughs> So besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what's put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. Nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton May. Hey! Uh, can we take a moment of silence for the first two to three years of Zach Wilson's career because all he's got going for him is Bob Sala. That's it. Moment of silence for his mom who made her Instagram <laughs> 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 That's what I thought we were doing. <laughs> Uh, that's, good to, that's what I thought we were doing. It's got, a, it's got a Chris and Indy. What's going on? <laughs> Mrs. Wilson, hope everything's all right. 
Yeah. Yeah. She jumped out there right with some hot takes and then. She got a fake mask she wears. AJ. She does not like Hooers. Not a fan of Disney. She doesn't like or Disney Snapchat. or Hooers. Oh, there's going to be a bunch of Hooers running around Zach. Mm-hmm. She said enough of it. Not on that Snapchat. I didn't think I could continue to be an FCC regulated person without really hitting my max potential. And that's why he's with us. I love it. Welcome back. This is the Pat McBee Show. I am AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat today. He's down in Houston with Connor. And he gets upset when I speak all over his music, but that's all right. We're going to take some time actually. Right now, the, the second part of this hour, Pat, we're back on in case you're wondering, in case you want to take a peek at that camera in front of you. What's up, bud? How you doing? You can. Hey, listen, classic music needed to come back in from the break. You can step all over that one. It's just Twine's beat drop that he went into the lab and come built on. up that you just dunked on to open the show. It's much different, but you're doing a fantastic job. I'm reading the Internet. People are saying best episode yet. Maybe dress like this every single day yes. and wow. post every day. Absolutely. I'll be on the road. I don't know if I could dress like this every day, but Pat, I'm going to get out to the callers. We have a guy named Sam who seems to have a, a question for us. So hopefully I get you dialed up. I don't want to double click. Met told me if I double click, it locks him in. So I'm trying to one click this dude. Yeah, but then you can nothing. unlock it very easy with a third click. I mean, nothing. There's no Sam had a great question. Can't get to you, bud. Maybe someone from the back. Oh, here we go. Sam, what's up, buddy? What's on your mom, pal? Oh, Jesus Christ. Wait, is yeah, this a up, monkey's fellas? guy? Here we Come go. On. Hey, Clap. don't worry. They're yeah. talking over you. What's up, Sam? How you doing, bud? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I was I was just curious. How did you and Pat, um, I guess, become friends or how did you start getting on the show? Because according to the Internet, I don't see that you guys ever played together or anything. So I, I was just curious about that. And uh, also, shout out to uh, the Hammer Down Boys. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, shout out. Yeah, shout out to the Hammer Down Well, first off, I don't know if we consider ourselves friends right now, Pat. I don't know what you think. I mean, we're probably on a trial basis right now, I think, I think for so. a little yeah, bit longer. I mean, yeah, you're yeah. in an audition phase. Good luck making it to the next fucking chapter, pal. But I, I, I mean, I don't think we've, I don't think we've, you know, no, really got to that. But I've never seen you in person. I don't think more than once. It's that is true. I mean, we hung out in Florida a little bit when I was going down there with you when you were fighting those guys. That great guy, Adam Cole and his buds. Very, very oh, nice piss people. off. Oh, yeah. 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 When you fell asleep on the wets of the pretzel, Hawk. Don't now, forget that. And now too. he's calling scumbags good guys. I mean, it just it, ruining the show. Well, I mean, you choose to go negative. I choose to go positive always. That's just kind of our dynamic, I guess. But I think we, <laughs> we originally started working together, Pat. We did the Laces Out show with Jerry Thornton uh, on Barstool when you were with them. And that's kind of when we started to get together and work together a little bit. We did a tailgate show, if you remember, at Ohio State, the live mm-hmm. tailgate show they were doing. And then it's just kind of grown from there. I used to... I guess call in and be a, a guest on the show. I'm kind of like Gump. Gump used to call in, and now he's on the show. That's me. Hi, baby, AJ. Very similar yeah. paths. Right? That is kind of true, actually. I mean, yeah. you weren't painting chips up there, but like <laughs> Gumpy was. But there was a time I was supposed to go on the Hawkcast. Um, <laughs> oh, you love telling this. this is, what a lie. What happened? I was, this is not a lie. What I'll happened? go back and check. I'll ch- I got receipts on this one because I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> what a shame. So I was supposed to do the Hawkcast. <laughs> I was invited. It was set up to go on there. I was. Ex- I'm a big fan of AJ Hawk. My uh, my holder in college, Jeremy Cash, went to Centerville High School in Ohio. He's a. Wow. Ma- I knew of AJ Hawk. I heard stories of AJ Hawk. Watching AJ click clack Ooh. all over the TV screen with Under Armour and his karate. I've oh, seen him on. do. I mean, I was a big fan of him while he was a player. <laughs> you know, anybody. Anytime there's a white that runs 4-4, four, four, okay, and jumps 40-plus, and I heard he's just a meathead from the middle of fucking nowhere, Ohio, like, I'm a big fan of that guy uh, automatically. So I was invited to do the Hawkcast. We had exchanged messages. I think we were kind of getting to a a not friend but friendlier spot. I was supposed to go on a Hawkcast, and he got cut the day that I was supposed to go on a Hawkcast. It was breaking news, Schefter tweeted it, and uh, we didn't talk for like four or five months after that, and that was a shame because uh, I, I didn't want to be uncomfortable and awkward, but I'm very thankful you are in our life now, AJ. Hey, I, I told you before, yeah, in, in all seriousness, I am very thankful I found this, and it, na- it kind of happened naturally, organically, and I think that's the, the best things do. You can't just all of a sudden jam something together and think it's going to work out, so that's why I like how we've naturally done this. I agree with that. 
there is one anomaly, and that is a Zito production. He just jammed <laughs> all this shit together. I mean, we're putting things in that don't match. He was putting round wires into square holes. Yep. And somehow <laughs> we are live. It, it is never short of impressive, the fact that we're here. But you're right. It's a natural thing. If we hated each other, I think with uh, the way both of us operate, it would have ended much quicker. Uh, so I, I, it's nice to know that a guy who's going to be in the Hall of Fame, sorry, not you. Me? This guy, Connor. yeah, this guy going this way, Connor. This guy Shit. is such a cool dude too. I think that's why uh, we enjoy your time. But AJ, we're lucky to have you every day. Hey, I'm very lucky to ha to be here. But hey, I want to run out to uh, to Bill in Washington real quick. Hey, Bill, what's on your mind, pal? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, AJ and boys, what's up? Um, what's up? Yesterday on the show, I you guys were talking about. Connor McGregor's leg break. Where are you going? And about how he's going to try to uh, be back training in six weeks. Uh -huh. And from a person who has had a very similar injury to that, I'm going to tell you it's impossible. You're not Connor McGregor. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right, I'm not Connor Sorry McGregor. Bill. He said in six weeks, he'll be right. on crutches for six weeks. I don't know if, like, training may be, like, hey, just moving his foot, just getting And then he said back. he's got a titanium rod in me leg from knee to so ankle. It's going to be unbreakable. Can you kick things so with that I. titanium rod? Can you, like, kick the wall and, and not even flinch? Unbreakable. He's iron. Uh, it still hurts. Sam Jackson. It's a good movie. Still hurts. Hey, thanks for the call, bud. So, Pat, Sam Jackson. What do you, what? the movie Unbreakable. Yeah. You guys seen Classic. it? Classic. Yeah. Mr. Glass. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good movie. Oh, that's a, that's a comic book, right? Yeah. 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 See, I didn't read the comic book, obviously, but I saw the movie, and Sam Jackson killed it in that movie. Pat, you know what I'm talking about? No, I was talking about fucking Bob Down Jr., dude. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Bob Downey Jr. <laughs> Who is that? What is that? It's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Bob Downey Jr. I never. That's Iron Man, right? See, I haven't seen those. I like him. Big fan no, of well, Bob Downey. You Down. must have heard it. In, now I'm starting to realize we're starting to experience. I think what you experienced on a day to day. We mm -hmm. said Iron. I said Iron Man. He's going to be fucking Iron Man. He's just. And why won't other fighters now just potentially get these titanium shafts put in? I'm going in. I might get into this game. You know these YouTubers are boxing and shit. I might get Ooh. into the fight game and just change. All of my bones to titanium. Fist of steel. Uh, oh, oh my. why not? Wait till you eat this fucking titanium patella, pal. <laughs> Wham! Dead. Wait, what, what happens when your opponent has that as well, and they're just blasting your mushy little brain with those things? No, I only fight against the fucking basic-ass bone-having bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you can work that out with Dana in the future. Or Triller. Is Triller still a thing? Is Triller still rolling? Still not sure. I don't know if anybody knows if Triller just fell off the map or if they're in a, a bad spot because they lost their pony boy. I they see should have had. Hey, that guy, the Long Island scumbag guy. Uh huh. Who? Pete Davidson. What? Everything he was saying about Jake, I knew was bad business for Thriller. I, I, I just that was not the right. But it was great entertainment, I guess. Uh, great, album. Laugh, great album. Great album. R.I.P. Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thriller. But wait, so what, you <laughs> think when you think that Jake Paul didn't sign off on having Pete Davidson come into his locker room and kill him and grill him before his fight? I don't think that helped his relationship with Thriller. Do you? I mean, just as a human, unless but I feel like I he's thought Jake it. Paul. I thought Jake Paul had to okay all of that. You know, like when Pete was making fun of him or people were making fun of him, I was like, oh, so Jake's like, yeah, you guys can do whatever. And I, was it like that? I'm not 100% sure. I mean, it Jake, make much Jake and Logan have a lot of power. I don't know if they have like final say in content and what's going to happen. Uh, is Moro stuff. Ronaldo calling that fight again? No. Oh, Dave Portnoy and Big Cat are calling this goddamn fight. Yeah. Any Anytime I hear these commentators. Wait, are you serious? Is, like any is Portnoy and Big Cat really calling the Showtime fight coming up? I think so. Yeah, that was. Uh, I think that was. We don't know. I knew there yeah, was all definitely one know. of the main sponsors. Oh yeah. shit! I, that yeah. was maybe us just like brainstorming uh -oh. and like maybe fantasy booking. This <laughs> yeah. But it's. Um, I'm not 100 sure. I thought because Barstool was all over it, they would do that. But every time I hear these commentators just start like burying Jake and Logan, it's like, hey, fuck it. The only reason you're there is because them. Like, what are we even? You, you want to go back into your house for COVID quarantine or or whatever, or do you want to have a job here tonight? Like that was. I just. I understand you have to stick up for the mixed martial arts community and you feel like you're putting on for your friends that probably don't like what Logan and Jake are doing. I get it. Okay. So there's a couple of things, but just coming from the complete vein of, oh, these guys are bad for boxing while I take a check 
for them boxing. I just that, that was always something I found interesting. I thought Jake okayed it, and, and he went. He left. Triller, so. Well, and Pete apparently reached out to the Paul brothers like, hey, would love to get involved, do some sort of like interview bullshit. And even after he was like, really? hey, there's a really good time. I would like to do the ones in the future. And Jake Paul obviously was like, no, fuck uh, you, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Logan said on his podcast, too, that like they were not expecting Pete Davidson to do any of that stuff. And then after yeah. he did, they were just like, all right, yeah, fuck this guy. Well, I mean, Pete's a comedian. I guess you never know, but. I wonder how much Pete had planned and how much it was in the moment, you know, of what like he had to go in with a plan. Like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to kill these guys. Like, I'm going to drill them hard at least. And then he tried to build them back up. I feel like now that's a narrative. Right? You go into something with like, I don't want to say a narrative, but like, yeah, you kind of in your head like this is how I'm going to paint this. I think we all do it. You know, like it's like this is how I feel about this. That was his angle for the night. And a lot of people found it funny, by the way. He yeah. had a big night socially. So. In his I in his frame, what he thought in his frame of mind would work did work with some people, but it's like any time you just start, you know, cutting promos on people, you you better let them know, like, hey, this is potentially a promo as yeah. opposed to like how I actually feel about you. If that's the case, hey, I want to I want to pivot quickly, Pat Bradley Beal. He's out of the Olympics, and I hear his family was his dream. He's wanted to play in the Olympics forever with health and safety protocol. So what exactly happened? He tested positive, but he's vaccinated. What, what are we doing here? Why is he out? Uh, I have no idea about any of the who's vaccinated, tested positive. Kevin Love but I dropped out, know. too. He dropped out? Yeah, the USA has six players right now. That are in, like, the protocol? No, just on their team to oh. play. Yeah, they have six players on their team. But the um, the interesting thing Can about Jordan all of this is back? we asked Shams to come on the show. He did ghost us here today. Ooh. So no. he did ghost us. Yeah. He He's probably busy. Yeah. There's a lot of things happening. We'll get. We would wish that Shams would be able to come on and tell us what the fuck's going on here from an inside. But this Olympic team is is very fascinating. Let alone the COVID issues and the games being canceled and losing a couple exhibition games, and then Shams saying they're not being able to come together on the court. Which what are they doing off the court then? Are they coming together? Oh. The big thing for me is they didn't invite Trey Young to the thing. That's what I learned today, Connor. That was insane. Well, especially when he wants to go. Like I feel like a lot of these guys with the lockdowns in Tokyo, like there is an appeal to not go. But if some guy who you know carried his team to the playoffs, who can shoot from goddamn half court. Get that guy on the team and let's score some buckets. And a superstar. So yeah. COVID's hitting them. There's some drama. Who knows what's going to happen with the Olympic Games as a whole. Now we're learning that some players that we are massive fans of and are very good and would probably make America look better at this thing weren't invited. It's a clusterfuck, AJ. It's a clusterfuck over there. Hey, but now, though, if, if guys have been working out and they're in shape, like who are they going to bring? Gump, you guys know like who... Who is available as an alternate that can actually get there in this short time? They reached out to Tobias Harris from the Sixers, but he's been off the grid for three weeks and yeah. doesn't want to come back. I think John Morant said he would do it too. Yeah. Like, they're what about I mean, Zion? Yeah, what's Zion doing? Come on. I forgot about it. I, I want Zion representing America. Nah. We got a guy True. named fucking Zion who is. 300 pounds and can dunk from the NBA three point line. That is something we should have representing America when we're battling against everybody else to tell them you fucking stink and we're the best. Well, I, I did see where Popovich, though, he had some comments talking about like the conditioning, like you have to be in shape. We don't have time once we get there. We only have a couple practices. So you got to maybe he checked in to see if Zion's in shape. Zion's in shape. You think? Please. Well, they were benching him his rookie year, saying he wasn't in shape. And then all of a sudden, what? The coach leaves. He plays all the time, looks the exact same. He's in complete shape. I mean, aside from that goddamn Nike shoe quitting on his pivot or whatever, the guy's always – I don't know what we why we keep saying he's not in shape, he's not healthy. Hey, send Zion over there. Send Ja over there. Send Trey over there. Let's go win this thing. What do they do? Pass a couple COVID tests? Stay off the dope for about seven, eight days with how skinny they are? I mean, here we go. Let's go win the Olympics again. AJ, you were with Steph. Uh, and – well, what's he doing? Oh, yeah. What about Steph? Why, why aren't they talking about him? Good question. He's smoking dope? You tell us. Oh, no. Why he? are you saying that? Uh, well, Shakari Richard, I would assume the NBA guys knew that they weren't allowed to smoke for a certain amount of time before the Olympic testing. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, hopefully they, they, hopefully they told him when they were going to test him. That's what I would imagine. They would have to, right? Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, I'm not... I mean, I'm potentially doped up right now, but... Like, <laughs> And it's I don't want to point fingers or anything, but the NBA got rid of the marijuana testing, right? Yeah, they don't they stopped even, testing yeah. during the bubble, and they carried that into this year. They don't even test for it anymore. And if the Olympics are testing Shakari, that means they have to be testing everybody, right? So then the guys, mm -hmm. then they just choose. 
I guess whenever you make the decision, like, oh, I'm going to be in the Olympics, then you enter the Olympic testing, you think, AJ? I don't know, because I know, like, UFC fighters, they have their protocol that, remember, like, Brock Lesnar, weren't they saying, like, when he would come back, oh, he entered the, he's in the protocol again, or he didn't get out of it. He didn't get out of the USADA protocol. So, yeah, I wonder if there's a date where you have to say, okay, I'm available. Like, I'm in, I'm in part of the testing protocol pool, but... We should have a basketball player on someday that, that played in the Olympics or is going to play in this Olympics and see what they say. NBA players are tested if you're playing in the Olympics for marijuana. It says it. Does it say when or how many times? July 1st was when the tri- – as long as – whenever they are a member of Team USA, they're eligible to be tested, which started on July 1st. So, Is that a one-time so test? St- so June 15th, they stopped smoking dope. Okay, and you're saying so, though, Pat, for people that don't know, you're saying because they are so skinny, they are so lean, they probably have two percent body fat that they can get it out of their system faster than others. Very fast, yeah. They probably eight days to be honest for some really? of them with how lean they are. Uh, in I'm not a that's that sounds like something that some marijuana specialist or somebody that doesn't like will come out and battle me against. But I got clean after like a ten blunt session in eight days. Whenever I lost, uh, but like do you have 15 to, do you have to drink anything days. special? Do you have to do anything? Like do you have to cleanse? What is it? So I literally woke up, put on two hoodies and sweats, and just jump roped until Rocky. I was like dead Rocky. ass tired. I fell asleep. It's like a new age Rocky and- montage. Yeah, that's literally what it was, though. I was just locked in my house. I wasn't able to go to the facility. The entire world called me a doofus. So I was just locked in my house, and I was told, like, hey, you're going to get tested in, like, eight days from now. And I thought if I failed that test, I would then enter the 24-month test. So I was like, I am not failing this test. So I lost 15 pounds. I mean, I came back after that thing, and I was a brand new man. I was very thin, pissed clean, kept it moving, but I was very thin. I could put a picture up of me. I think I had like 4% body fat or something like that. I mean, I got very, very, very lean, very quick. Um, But yeah, if like JaVale McGee just got signed, yeah. I guess. Mitt, Mitt just sent in uh, the group text, a tweet from Shams. He was probably busy typing up that tweet. That's why he couldn't come on the show. He says JaVale McGee has been selected to join the 12-man team USA for the Tokyo Olympics. So has he been in the testing then? Has he been in the testing or is he just entering the testing now? What's going on? Yeah, hopefully you just need like one clean test and you're in. Like, don't you think? You could always wear one of those fake penises that you fill with clean pee. Yeah, yeah, the wizenator. Sure. Good. <laughs> Who do, you, do you ask AJ, Popovich? You- do you ask Popovich? Hey, Pop, need some queen piss, bud. Can you <laughs> drain it in here? <laughs> AJ, you you weren't a dope smoker, obviously, but no. I think at the beginning of your career, the Wizenator was still available, right? Still a thing. I mean, the who got cu- the guy that got caught with it? What year was it? My first year was 06. It might have been around there. It was, was it Robert, Robert Smith got- or Ontario Smith. Not Robert. It was one of the Smiths. Ontario, I think, because that was always a joke. Every time the guy's sitting there in his in his um, you know, like a he's an umpire calling balls and strikes, watching you pee, I would always make the joke about the Wizenator. Like, oh, this is where the Wizenator comes in, right? And you ha 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 yeah. So I had to do that two hundred and some times in a twenty seven month period in front of the guy calling balls and strikes or whatever, and I had a lot of Wizenator conversations with said piss testers from all around the country. Every single city I went to I got piss tested because you you know, I got in trouble or whatever the uh, for a public intoxication. But the Wizenator, that was the game changer there for a bit. I think somebody put pregnant, like, right? Didn't they put pregnant pee in there or something like that? Oh, or? yeah. The hard thing is keeping it the right temperature, right? Doesn't it have to be warm? Like, you can't be turned in cold piss. Yeah, so, I mean, we don't have enough time here, and we're about to get kicked out of our hotel room. But we used to, I mean, we had Visine bottles that we go to our lame friend pee in that. We put it in between our legs, our wear lame, lame uh, compression pants. <laughs> You know what I mean? What was that? Go to our lame friend. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, douche, come pee in this for me. Hey, we appreciate your uh, I would have peed for you. I would have peed for you, Pat. Thank you, AJ. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I could. You know what? So your your heart out is 5530 or 5630? 56. 56 flat. Pat, you guys are changing up times on me since the last time I've been here. No, dude. Hey, You're Pat. a clown. You're hey, a put clown. On the suit. Hey, Pat. <laughs> Here's the question. All these, you have a stack of paper, giant stack of papers over here. If those somehow got knocked off the desk, would you be hurt? Would you be upset? No, but don't do it. What are we? 
I mean, I don't want to, but this it's the walls are closing in on me here. <laughs> it's so tight up here. I can't move. I feel like I can't do anything. I got this jacket on that's restricting me. I just feel like a cage. But yeah, animal. you dress like a stooge. That's on you. The table is getting filled. We are going to get kicked out of our room. I want to let you know. Thank you so much for what you're doing, boys. AJ, SmackDown tonight, 8 p.m. in front of a live audience. We'll be there next hour. AJ's got Boom right. Mancini. Trey Mancini, Pat. We got to get out to the hard out. Come on back, guys. We'll see you. This was supposed to be a monumental evening for me. I'm dressing up as Vince McMahon on Vince McMahon's show in front of Vince McMahon with at least two million people watching. I gotta get ready, I gotta get prepared, and I'm fucking excited. Okay, I had a lot to do with what was gonna be an open that billions of people were gonna fucking see, I know it! I'm Michael Cole. Michael Cole of 1998. And he's Pat McManaphy. Never do kiss my I don't know why he's that. Let's get right to it. I think I should. No. By the way, I have to do the turn to you as well. And you just push me. Michael Cole, welcome to the Kiss My Ass Club. That would be... And at that point, you bend, you bend over, I'll do this, I'll go. Anyhow, we're going to be celebrating many of the great highlights of SmackDown over the years. Let's take you back to the very first Your episode. main event. I think I have to come back in with the door fire. And then he just... Your fire! <laughs> and this is the Friday Night SmackDown throwback edition. Michael Cole, let's get right to it. The WWE Universe has been wishing for this my entire life. Welcome to the Kiss My Ass Club. I'm going to do this. Boom. Nonetheless, we're celebrating all the highlights of SmackDown. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Let's take you back to the very first SmackDown. Fire! 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 It's about the, the same back to the main event for the first SmackDown. <laughs> oh. Then we're going to come out of that. I had to watch film. Look at this fucking guy. Look at this fucking guy. Shut up. Life sucks. And then you die. You're getting goosebumps right now. You deserve to be squirreled. He's fucking peacocking the whole time. Felt like everybody was pumped up about Pat McAnafe. Kiss my Oh, by the way, they're filming a documentary of me becoming Vince McMahon for WWE Network. What could go wrong? Nothing! Or it could end up with him saying, McAfee, you're fire! Hurry up! You're fire! But to play Vince McMahon, I was told, bullied, I was told I have to show my face. Listen. I mean, you said to go see them. Vince didn't have facial hair. Oh, no, no, my face is not built yeah. for that. Commit. I can tell you, you agree with me, Pat really should shave the goatee, right? Because Vince never had facial hair. No, Vince was very clean cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just do it for yeah. the business. Trying to tell Pat he's got to shave the facial hair. We don't have time. The show's about to start. Vince doesn't have facial hair. Do we not care about the show anymore? The show is about being true to our history. It's about being true to our product. I am way too ugly to have a shaved face. Just get the beard off. We gotta go shoot something. Oh, no. That part right there, toughest. Oh, it's gone. That's like four years of experience, right there. This is not rushing. Don't look at me like that, okay? This is terrible. You look exactly like you look. Oh, this is uh, this is disgusting. This is disgusting. How do you feel? I feel like I got bullied by this guy. And I don't know how that happened. We're gonna have a night. Nice have a good time. Hey, Friday night SmackDown throwback. Go out and do your shoot. Good evening, sir. Ah, uh, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Smackdown Throwback Edition! <laughs> Called me and said to hang tight here for some reason. Uh oh. I don't know why. Are we fired? I don't know. I shaved my face for no reason. But hey, if we had to do it, I would have done it. Everybody knows. It. And now everybody knows, it, you know? I mean, it's just my face for the next month and a half, two months. I'm shave my face for no reason. Shave for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta take it off. Yeah, I gotta shave so for no sorry. reason. I know. <laughs>
You know what you did. This thing had a hour and a half shelf life recipe, dude. Boy, I think it would have done well on the internet. That's a shame. Let's keep it moving. The Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. This is hour two of the Pat McAfee Show, Friday, July 16th. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat. We're on this camera right now, guys. This one right here, Diggs. <laughs> I'm changing it up on me. You know what? I, Sorry, I like it. I can adapt at any time. Don't worry about it, Foxy. But you know what's great? Something I really like, Foxy. What's that? What about you, Dick? What about you, Ty? What do you like, What's that? CBDMD. Oh, you guys like it? Oh, the best. Oh, you guys both like made it. Come on. Yeah, it's the best. Hey, you know the Suns and Bucks both made the finals. Hell College yeah. play players are legally cashing checks, and Hell the Lightning yeah. won the cup by circumventing the salary cap. Big words in on the read. Oh, I'm glad okay. Pat's not here today. But by far the most exciting thing that's happened over the past couple of weeks was the release of CBDMD's brand new limited edition coconut flavored tincture. Oh, Hell yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Gumpy, your beard lineup is off the charts. Unbelievable the symmetry you have between both sides. I'm very impressed by it. But I hope you do know this coconut tincture will only be here for the summer, so you and your beard better jump on it while you can because we're running out, man. It's going to be fall. Football's starting in no time. So the limited edition coconut flavored tincture, it's brand new. And for the past couple of weeks, I guess people have been just talking about it. Oh, yeah, nonstop. Juice. Like, hey, I can't go anywhere. I can't walk down the street without yeah. hearing people Delicious. talk about it. But hey, now, try that coconut. <laughs> exactly. That I think I heard that walking across the street uh, here today. Yeah. I parked yeah. across the street. Yeah. But you know what? To make it even easier, try everything CBDMD has to offer. Make this the summer of you. They're giving away. They're giving you 25% off your next order 25%. when you use the promo code McAfee. That's M-C-A-F-E-E -E at checkout. Once again. CBDMD.com, promo code McAfee for 25% off your purchase of superior CBD products from CBDMD. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So we're going to transition right next to our first guest of the day who has really taken the world by storm. This guy, if anyone watched the Home Run Derby, if they've been watching baseball, the Orioles, this guy can do it all. He's fun to watch. We can't wait to talk to him. So ladies and gentlemen, Trey Boom Boom Mancini. Yeah. Hey guys. How you doing, man? Are we allowed to call you Boom Boom, or is it Boomer now? Like, what what is it? Where are we with this? Whatever, whatever you guys want, either one. Um, you know, all my college teammates from Notre Dame call me Boomer, but um, yeah, the real nickname started as Boom Boom. So whatever one you guys like better, um, I'm cool with. Hey, either way, man, you keep uh, you keep hitting dingers. We are fans. <laughs> you can go by whatever you want, but I want to get to that. You're so you're you're pitching. You're the guy who pitched to you, Ristano, right? That's his name. Yeah, Chuck Ristano. So Notre Dame coach, you played at Notre Dame, you played baseball there. When you made the call to him, when you let him know that he was going to pitch for you, like how excited was he? I would be pumped. I would also be nervous too because I want to throw you strikes. 
Yeah, he was uh, he was completely taken aback. He was at a loss for words. He um, was on the verge of tears. He was on a recruiting trip in the Atlanta area, and I called him about 20 minutes before my game. We were playing the Blue Jays in Buffalo, and um, and I found out that I was going to be in the Home Run Derby, and I was like, I have to call him right now um, and, and let him know. And, um, yeah, I, I called him, and I, I said, you know, you know how I, I told you when we were at Notre Dame that, if I was ever in the Major League Home Run Derby, you could throw to me. Um, you know, I, I was kind of joking at the time when I said that to him, but I kept my promise and, and I said, you know, let's do it, man. And, and he just couldn't believe it. He was so excited. And, um, you know, he got he got to practicing right away. So how was like how many Home Run Derby type things have you taken part of in, in your your young career? You're still such a young guy. Like, is this is it completely foreign to you to just try to hit dingers on every single shot when everybody's watching in the world? <laughs> It was strange. Uh, so my last round of every day, like maybe I'll try to drive the ball a little more, but I'm not necessarily trying to hit home runs either. So it was, um, yeah, it was bizarre having the whole world watching you. There's no other sporting events really on whenever the home run derby is, but I try not to think about that too much either. Um, but it was strange watching the world take you, watch you take batting practice. It was, um, it was crazy. It, it had to be exciting all at the same time. And, and you're facing off against a guy like Pete Alonzo, who seems like, uh, I mean, with all due respect, like an absolute maniac. Like <laughs> well, Aaron Rodgers describes Bryson DeChambeau as a maniac in a positive way. Like, hey, it's a good thing. That's why he is so good. He seems like a complete maniac, and he was dialed in. Like, was he like that the the first time you saw him at the ballpark that night? He was dialed in. Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, he was pretty focused. I mean, he he loves the home run derby. He puts on an incredible show out there, and um, it was fun to watch. Just you know, I was just watching him like I was a fan, and. He seemed to be the only guy that didn't really get too tired either. That's what I was most impressed with. In the last bonus round in the finals, I was completely gassed. I had absolutely nothing left. I I hit five homers in it, but it, it really took everything out of me. And he goes up there and hits six in a row to start his bonus round to win it. And um, it, it was impressive. I couldn't believe it. Now, with your, your swing, though, moving forward, there's always people always worry about that. Oh, is it going to mess my swing up for the year? I know there's some guys who thought it might get them back into the groove, like if they do home run derby, kind of get them back into feeling good back that when they start playing again when they're on the field. But for you, is there any worry that it's going to mess up your swing for the season? Uh, going into the home run derby, my swing wasn't actually feeling too good. I had a pretty tough June and, um, you know, had felt a little – weird at times so if anything you know i don't think it could have messed up my swing that much more so <laughs> that was my thought going into it um it's nothing i thought about too much if anything it was just such a cool experience and such an adrenaline rush and such an amazing night that um you know i think it actually gives me a little bit of confidence moving forward in the second half of the season Tosh schmidt's got something trey you said it was uh you know like kind of awkward having everyone watch you so obviously you haven't done this a bunch but did you feel anything different with otani out there like did it almost feel bigger than it normally would or like what was uh kind of like the the surrounding um like circus around him yeah so he was the last guy to hit in the first round and it was a little bit different so everybody obviously you know cheered really loud whenever he got announced but then the stadium fell completely silent and everybody got out their phones to record him hitting and um you know all eyes were just completely locked in it was just a strange silence that fell over the stadium once his round started, um, he's just, you know, taken baseball by storm. Look at what he's done. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. And um, I don't even know. I, I know he's getting talked about a lot, but I don't know if he even gets enough credit still for what he's doing. Being an elite pitcher, being an elite hitter, it's just absolutely incredible. Hey, so, uh, Trey, we have the guy that's going to ask you a question next, oh, COVID Cowboy Diggs. Tomorrow he has a huge celeb softball game where he has top billing. He's very, very nervous. Is there any advice you could give him? He's worried about striking out that's two or three true. times. Like, What do you think he should do to calm down? Dude, just swing for the fences every time as hard as you can. You're, you're, gonna, you're bound to hit it at some point. Thank Even you. if you strike out your first at bat, keep going, man. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, what Trey. Do you got? He's got a question for you. you. What do you got, Diggs? Um... So I am a Pirates fan, and so I'm very used to them being sellers at the deadline. Now, the Orioles, I assume, also probably going to be sellers at the deadline. Do you guys talk about that at all in the locker room? And with how well you've played and stuff like that, like, is it in the back of your mind ever that you may be potentially one of those guys? It's something I don't think about too much. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I've, I've been a part of the Orioles for – 
you know, five years now. And especially in 2018, we had a really big sell off at the deadline and it was a strange day because um, that's when a, a lot of the guys that had been in the organization for a long time got traded. So I, I have been a part of a big sell off and I've stayed every year. Um, but it, it's still, you know, it, it's a little strange. And especially the closer it gets to July 31st, you do think about it a little bit. Um, cause your life can change a lot. You, you, you know, it, you're totally uprooted. You have to find a new place to live. You're playing for a new team. So that's a little strange, but, um, it's something that I try not to think about too much at all. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going to stay in Baltimore, but, um, you know, I, I think it does creep in, in, into some people's minds for sure. Hey, what's your relationship like with your, your manager and, and all the coaches on the staff? I, I ask this because there's such a difference and contrast between, Different, different sports, like say football. I played football. The coaching staff, everything, you only have 16 games in regular season, so everything is do or die. This is it. Like this game, it all means this. Now I go into a clubhouse before a baseball game. I understand 162 games. you got to be kind of casual. You have to kind of uh, pace yourself. Are the managers, like how much are you interacting with your managers and your other coaches? Is there one coach that you kind of gravitate to? How does it work? Yeah, I've got a great relationship with our manager and all our coaches. Um, you know, they do such a great job every day. And like you said, it's 162 games. So, um, you know, you obviously want to go out and win every single game. That's your mindset every day. But at the same time, that doesn't happen for any team. So, um, yeah, it's maybe a little bit more of a relaxed feel, I'd say, than football where you play once a week. Um, so I'd say like one week of our games is kind of equivalent to another sports, um, you know, game and um our hitting coach don long is um you know somebody who i'm extremely close with he's been a huge influence on me throughout my career and and you know helps keep me grounded and and helps me keep my mindset where it needs to be gumpy yeah boom boom just to go back to the home run derby in years past they've done outs instead of the timer would you have preferred the outs or did you like how it was with it being timed and be able to have a timeout i really like the timer um as a fan, especially, I think it's a really cool format and it can come down to the wire. And it did come down to the wire a few times. I mean, we had Soto and Otani go into a swing off, which was really cool. So, um, you know, I think for TV purposes, sometimes it can be a lot uh, as far as, you know, trying to follow the ball and then the next pitch is coming in and things like that. But I, I think it's such a cool format and I really like it, you know, compared to having the 10 outs and then you know, you hit how, however many home runs in between the outs. So is it something like, have you been able to watch the TV copy of the home run derby? And you think it's, do you think they'll make any tweaks next year? Cause it's, <laughs> it's true. You guys are hitting so many, so many bombs. We can't really see how far they're going because you're already swinging on the next one. Yeah. I mean, I could see them maybe um, amending a couple things, maybe taking more time in between pitches and then, you know, maybe they make it a four or five minute round, but you're not allowed to throw the next pitch until that one ball lands. Um, so there's a couple things they could do. I really liked it, but I'm not going to lie. I, I was exhausted. I was exhausted. I was expecting to not be able to walk the next day, and I somehow actually felt pretty good. So um, I, I feel very fortunate for that. But, um, you know, to solve that issue as far as, you know, balls just flying all over the place, maybe you have to wait for the one to land before the next pitch comes. Diggs? Trey, where are uh, pitchers hiding the spider tack now that they're being checked every <laughs> orifice on their body? Where's the new place that they're putting it? Dude, they they are not able to hide it at all. It appears, um, you know, the umpires are, are checking them basically everywhere. I saw, the, I saw the first day that they were checking things. A couple pitchers were like pulling their pants mm -hmm. down. Um, you know, it was hilarious. But um, yeah, there's nowhere to hide it. It's a huge risk to take if you do try to hide it somewhere. The only thing I can think of is maybe their hair if they have long hair. But um, even that is super risky, and it, it appears as though nobody is really using it now. Trey, when's the first time you heard of spider tech? This year, it, it's, um, you know, something I never thought about too much. I always knew that pitchers use some stuff to grip the ball and things like that. And I didn't really have that much of an issue with it, to tell you the truth, um, until I realized what spider tech was and, you know, that weightlifters use it to, you know, carry boulders and things like that. <laughs> so um, I think it got a little bit out of hand. But at the same time, I don't really have a problem with them using something like sunscreen and rosin, for example. Um, it, it's nothing I thought about too much. I just I knew they did it and, and I was fine with it. But um, I just think it got a little bit out of hand. Um, but if they could somehow, 
you know, moving forward, let them use at least something. I don't know if sunscreen and rosin is it or something else, but maybe they should have some substance that maybe they can use to at least grip the ball a little better because the balls are very slick. What's up, Gump? Yeah, Boom Boom, your teammate, John Means, it's been cool to watch him grow, turn into probably one of the top pitchers in the league. How much has your team missed him even just on the mound or in the clubhouse while he's been out? Yeah, we've missed him so much. I mean, John has just become a, a dude um, in the league. He's an ace. He's incredible. Um, you know, every time he pitches, you know, you've got a very, very good shot to win the game. And, um, you know, every team needs somebody like that. And we've really missed him. Um, his no hitter earlier in the year yeah. was one of the most incredible days I've ever had at a baseball field and a memory that I'm always going to cherish. So I'm excited that he's about to join us, um, you know, after this series. He'll join us in Tampa no, I'm next week, so I'm really, really happy to have him back. Uh, the uh, celebrity softball MVP has another <laughs> one for you. <laughs> Trey, you talked about how quiet the stadium got when Shohei went up to bat for uh, during the home run derby, but correct me if I'm wrong, you got a standing ovation during yours. I mean, how that had to be pretty fucking cool, right? Yeah, it was incredible. Um, you know, I... I I was so in the zone that I didn't even like soak it up enough, I think. But, um, you know, I, I took the time out with two minutes and seven seconds left, which is not what I intended to do, but I couldn't get anything going. So I, I stepped out for a second. I was like, all right, you've got to get it together and at least put a respectable round together and not make yourself look like a total courtesy invite. Um, so I... You know, I got it together, and Rostano was just on the money, and, and luckily we put up a great rest of the round. So it was really cool after the round was over to hear the crowd and all the support. It was a memory that I'm always going to cherish. It was just amazing. <laughs> D- did you have any moment before the home run derby where you thought, "Man, I can't go out here and get skunked. I got to hit a home. I got to at least hit one. Like you got to get on the board early." It, it, it did go through my mind. Like I knew that I was going to at least be able to hit you know, a few homers, but you never really know what it's going to be like until you get out there. And, um, yeah, there are a couple things I was thinking, don't whiff at any pitches and then make sure you at least hit a few homers and make yourself look respectable. So, um, you know, luckily it went even better than I, than I anticipated. So it was really cool. Are you swinging all out on every pitch there? Like, is it, are you giving a hundred percent using all your energy? So I was at first, especially with the adrenaline um, pumping through me a little bit. And then after the timeout, I realized that I need to kind of calm it down a little and swing a little easier, reduce my effort level and almost take a second between every pitch. Um, And I think that's what Pete did so well. I think a lot of us were kind of like, you know, go, 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 swinging really hard. And Pete was never really in a hurry. And um, like I said, he just uh, it didn't appear tired to me at all. Um, it was the one guy's of a machine, isn't it? <laughs> the guy seems like an absolute machine, doesn't he? he? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I ran into a brick wall there. <laughs> hey, next year, though, I, I assume it's something you want to continue to do in the future? I would love to. Um, I think if I, you know, one of my biggest personal goals is, and it's kind of eluded me at this point, even though I've put up some good seasons, is I haven't made an all-star game. Um, and if if I if that happens, um, then I would be happy to do the home run derby again. But I think it would be under that condition that I, um, you know, be in the game as well. So, um, you know, that's a, a big goal of mine. So, you know, hopefully if that's the case, I'll, I'll be in it next year or, you know, in the future. That's awesome, man. Hey, we really, really appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the season, the rest of your career. You'll be playing forever. We will be watching. Uh, you have an awesome story. Obviously, a good dude. So, ladies and gentlemen, Trey Boom Boom Mancini. Yeah! Yeah! He's a good dude, right? Yeah, yeah, awesome. for sure. Like baseball players are, are fun. Like baseball players, I don't know, I'm sure you guys know when you look at the professional athletes in all different sports. Like baseball players seem to always be pretty relatable, yes. pretty down to earth and cool and chill and laid back, I feel like, especially compared to other professional sports. I was, you've obviously been in association with a lot more athletes than we have. Have you found that baseball players may be the most relatable? Or is there hockey more? Hockey as well. I was going to say. Baseball and hockey. Cause it's also like your, how you came up. So baseball player, if you're a baseball player and you come up, yeah, you're you're grinding away. You're playing all these travel teams, whatever. Even if you get drafted first round, you may grind it out yeah. in the minors for a couple of years. There's mm-hmm. no guarantees. It's so hard to make it. So when you do that, you're like living with host families, playing at a ball or whatever for a little bit. Football, you don't have that. You get drafted, mm-hmm. boom. You're you're you know, you're Trevor Lawrence. You're starting quarterback day one for the Jacksonville Jags. Mm-hmm. So you're always the man. And I think hockey is similar. Hockey, they all go play juniors and yeah. live with these host families. Like 
it's such a grind getting there. I think that makes them more relatable once they get there, actually. Staying relatable and stuff like that, too, is probably pretty tough and, like, staying positive like him. I mean, he's been on the Orioles. Like, they basically fucking stunk every year he's been yeah. there, you know, and that's a long season to just be losing and losing and losing <laughs> and traveling. Like, so to, like, remain optimistic. It's Groundhog and, like, Day. Like, yeah, 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 for really sure. It is. Yeah, he's in a hotel in KC, you could tell. And, yeah, like, that's right. Every, <laughs> yeah. That's every day, pretty much. And, like, man – it's such a roller coaster when it comes to baseball of hitting like ups and downs mm-hmm. and slumps. And even when you're playing great and you're hitting the ball as good as you can, like, cool. What are you hitting the ball? 350 during that time? <laughs> well, he just said that too. He was like, you know, I was hoping to find my swing a little bit. I had a really cold June. So like, hopefully, you know, me hitting a bunch of bombs will kind of straighten myself out going forward. I guess I know there's a thing out there. Foxy, I don't know if we have the graphic of the different jerseys that they're auctioning off for charity oh. from the all-star game. Yep, but one second. We know they list all the players and everybody's jersey. First off, I'm shocked that they don't go for more than this. I think some of them are going for fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, all of this stuff. And then the old Shohei Otani. If you look for the bombs, okay, let's go up top. Fernando Tatis Jr. twenty five hundred. Vlad Guerrero Jr. two thousand, which I think is a travesty. He's it's that the MVP. Low. Yeah, how is it that low? Like Jersey's it, ugly. I, I mean, an authentic True. jersey costs like four hundred dollars mm-hmm. to buy that they didn't wear, right? Yeah. And then you go all the way to the bottom. Shohei Otani. His jersey is at one hundred and eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> Forty five thousand dollars more than the next closest player. Which who who is it? Like who's who do you think is bidding on this? <sighs> Ty. No, not a chance. I, mean, I might buy that fucking Judge jersey yeah, for eight sixty. You know, you How is it eight sixty for Aaron There's Judge? No I don't way, know. Dude. Like you said, uh, I mean, if you buy like the replica All Star Game jersey, it's probably three hundred and fifty, four hundred yeah. bucks. Because those blue ones were, were ugly as fuck. You didn't True. like those, huh? And they had like it was like the, the white Hen- ones. I liked it was like a lot. the Henley too. It wasn't the full button down baseball, which we jersey. know you love. Yeah, you know, you I cut all Henley your shirts in Henley. AJ yes. Henley right. Hall. I do. I don't. I don't like that look though. When you look at them, they just look weird. It's not even like the throwback. Remember the throwback Reds? Like so, I'm. Oh, I grew the, Reds the, fans. Uh, yeah. The button pullovers. Ups. Well, no, the Reds just had the gray pullovers, gray mm-hmm. pants, gray pullover, like Pete Rose yeah. days. Yep. People hated them at the time. And now you look back, like, oh, that's pretty sweet when you see them as throwbacks. I think it's kind of cool. But Remember when the Reds cut off, did the cutoff sleeve jerseys? Yeah, yeah when they had Griffey, the gray <laughs> yeah, ones. Those were awesome. incredible. <laughs> Pinstripes. Yeah. They should change. I mean, teams that, baseball teams, especially if you're not winning, you should probably do things like that like every two weeks. Baseball teams have so many jerseys, dude. And so they have, many. They don't have rules. Like when athletes, okay, yeah. so if you're in the NFL, they are very, very strict on your uniform. This is yeah. what your socks look like. This is what your wrist tape can't go higher than this. Your towel can only be this length. Baseball, I remember. I took BP with the Brewers early on when I was in Green Bay, and I was asking those guys, I'm like, man, you can just wear whatever you want. Like, like yeah, it's one day I'll wear, like, 4X pants. Next day I wear skin-tight pants and pull them up to my knees. Like, <laughs> they can do whatever they want, it seems like. And they, I'm like, don't you ever get fined? And they're like, well, I'm talking to a 10-year vet. He's like, no, nah, I've never really been fined. I'll do whatever I want. That's, That's your wild. commish. That's Raj. That's Raj. That's you know what, Raj? Thank you for holding us accountable, Raj. <laughs> thank you. Roger's holding everybody accountable. He wants it all to look good, look uniform, truly professional, a la me today yeah. in, this, in well, the jacket. What blew my mind, too, is that you guys, like, you don't, you have the merch, but you only are allowed to wear it at the facility. Like, you can't take, like, a Packers hoodie home. <laughs> Well, each team is different. That's team by team. You could, you just got to ask if That's you want to do that. Green Bay. There's no way. In Green Bay, they, they, I'd say I've said it a million times, they do things the right way. Like from everybody, Red Batty is, he is famous as a, an equipment manager. I actually had people out in Tahoe when I was playing that know Red. Multiple people from different walks of life know Red Batty and T Bone, all the great guys uh, at Green Bay and the guys and, and gals that, that work there behind the scenes that people don't really hear from or hear about. They're awesome. But, yeah, you don't want to be walking out with something if you didn't let them know. Don't take that Packers hoodie out, man. I I would not want to be caught doing that. Other teams, they're a little bit more lax when it comes to things like that, though. Are you guys, what, you're surprised to hear that? Yeah. Yeah? Well, it was probably much different coming from Ohio State, too, yeah. right? Where I assume you just oh, got fucking they gave geared up and left and, and right. I mean, now they do. I'm not joking. We used to cut holes in our gloves to get a new pair. So, like, <laughs> if you wear your gloves long enough, they start smelling like vinegar. Yep. They yeah. smell terrible. Goldie Awful. gloves. Yeah, yes. and so... You could take them up to him, like, hey, I need a new pair of gloves. Like, no way, bud. No, I don't see any holes in them. (laughs) And so I'm like, are you serious? So you'd have to go get some scissors, make little holes in them, and then they would question you and say, you put these holes in. (laughs) No, absolutely not. But that was just so you're – because if you wear those gloves that smell terrible that you've been wearing for, like, four weeks – Your hands. Your hands – Will not stop smelling like that forever. It's brutal. Did like, you have to wear like the Nike gloves, or could you wear cutters or whatever you want? Oh no, you gotta wear Nike. You can't wear cutters it's, when it's college, and, and Nike is paying seventy million dollars to 
for you guys to wear all their stuff. Yeah, that's why we couldn't spat. You can't do anything. You can't cover up anything because oh. there's they are real strict about that stuff. I'm surprised Nike didn't come out with a spat or something like that. Well, like, they don't care. Even if, like you used to be able in the NFL, you could spat your shoes, spat your cleats, and you, if you even like drew a swoosh on there, you did something to let them know. Like they used to be able to get away with that. You couldn't anymore because they want people to see the newest and latest shoes and their models of cleats. What's up, Nick? AJ, for a stooge like Evan Fox, what does spat mean? Spat is when you so you have your cleats and you you tape around them. Like a lot of times, people will spat over their their cleat if they roll their ankle or something. A lot of people do it for looks. I did it my whole time because I wasn't with Nike, so I could spat. And once I spatted from the beginning of my rookie year, I'm like, well, I have to now just because it feels good. So I wasn't going to go back. Um, it goes all it's off of the old dress shoes, right? Mm-hmm. Are those dress shoes called spats or whatever with the white on top? It makes your shoe ve- feel very tight. Like and it, it feels great. Yeah. You're locked in. And I never liked I never taped my ankles, so I, I would my spat was like elastic tape that I would do myself. So it was definitely not for support. It was just because I liked the way it felt and looked. A lot of people do it for support though. I spat well, in the last turkey bowl I was in. I might do it tomorrow. You should spat for sure for your, your uh, all star game? Probably will. I wasn't allowed to spat in high school, so I remember I got to my first, like, uh, this Ohio North-South game I played in, and I was so juiced to spat my cleats just for that game. <laughs> and then I couldn't do it again until I got to the NFL. But in baseball, you can do whatever the hell you yeah. want, apparently. Like, who was it? Uh, Mickey Tettleton? Remember he used to button? He had, like, four <laughs> buttons Jesus. down. Mickey his damn Tettleton? Oh. His belly button was Mickey. sticking out. He had so many buttons oh, down on his jersey. I mean, I was that Mickey? If we a picture Pendleton. of Mickey. My lord, AJ. No, Mickey Tettleton. Yeah, Mickey Tells an all-time ledge. I Check can't him believe out. That. I mean, that was the most random fucking <laughs> His jersey, though, you remember certain things from a kid growing up. I, I think it was his jersey. He, Are he you saying buttoned, he was on the Reds? No, he wasn't on the Reds, but he may have buttoned two buttons out of seven on his jersey. <laughs> his last year was 97. No, was I don't really? remember. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm old. I'm 37, but, I, but maybe I... Yeah, he had a he had a big impact on me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take one call before we get to the uh, we get to a, a quick break here. But here we go. Right, let's go to Andrew in Wisconsin. If I can dial this guy up, Andrew, what's on your mind, bud? Hey, what is up, guys? Shout out to you guys for uh, always making me laugh. Shout out, shout, shout out. out, and uh, just wanted to talk about getting some better fucking national broadcasters for football wow. like we have mlb local regional broadcasters you talking nfl or TV. college or what what are you talking uh, mainly pro um you know you get the national guys that come in they see the team maybe once a week or once a season you got to get some more regional guys kind of like the radio um I'll, I'll mention some names i know aj will know about uh larry mccarran and, and wayne larrabee yeah they're great um, for the for the radio broadcast, I think we should get some more guys like that for national broadcast. Yeah, well, I appreciate the call. I mean, you you should, and those guys you mentioned are, are legends in Green Bay. But when you listen to a team's radio announcers, they are homers for yeah. that team. Yes. They're cheering Green. for that team. That's why it's fun to listen to. If you're for some reason listening to the game, you want to tune into your team's broadcast because they are with you. They're like they're living and dying on every play. But you can't do that with the national the national team. Or you can't have one that's diehard biased for one team. The rest yeah. of the country doesn't want to hear that. For, yeah. for this guy, like if you want sync up your the radio broadcast with the TV, but most of the local radio broadcasts for the NFL game are like I'll listen to the Steelers one and, I, and they're great guys or whatever. But it's too Homer. Like I can't even listen to because it it's really? too Homer. Like I'll be watching. the player. There's usually a former player that does the uh, the color commentary for a long know? time, forever. Um, it was Tunch. And, Tunch Ilkin, baby. Yeah, and he oh, he's recently Tunch. had some health issues, so I don't know if he's doing it anymore. How long he's gonna do it? But Tunch has been great for a long time. But they are very very Homer. Yeah, and but that's they they're supposed be. to be. They are, they should be, and it's hard for the national broadcast. That's why Joe Buck he always says like everybody thinks Joe Buck hates their team, which he doesn't care about your team. Like he's not. I think about that. Joe Buck got a bad rap because of McCarver. Really? I think McCarver buried a lot of teams, and then once McCarver left, Joe Buck just took <laughs> it on the shins. I mean, it's a no win for those play by play guys. I feel like if if you're too excited for one team, then the other team obviously always thinks so. Hopefully, play-by-play people don't get worried about that and don't sit there and think about, oh, well, this fan base is going to be very upset if I show too much emotion in a, in a touchdown call. Like, I don't know. I, I think people should be happy to know that there's a good chance the national broadcasting crew doesn't care 
at all about your team. Also, they're watching them more than once for sure. Because any more, like you know, the Packers or the the either oh, we had Troy and we had Troy and Joe on every game. I felt like that's what I, I mean. Like yeah. you know, like the certainty, like Romo and those guys, like they they will call the same teams. You know, four or five a lot times of my a homes, year. I'm yeah, sure, exactly. CBS. A lot of home. Yeah, and it used to always be Brady on CBS too. And or even those Manning. lower crews, those lower crews definitely get used to calling like Bengals and Jaguars. Oh yeah, like yeah. they they get those too. Like because I think that's only broadcast like three percent of the country Correct. when you're mm-hmm. doing those those like regional fox or whatever like yeah i don't i mean there's still you're still calling an nfl game so it's awesome i'd love to work nfl games someday but yeah i guess it would be hard to to not be a complete homer especially if you're a former player and you're you have coaches on different staffs that you played for your buddies are playing i isn't that why peyton manning they claim he might not want the monday night gig he doesn't well he didn't want to have to speak ill of of, eli right now eli's done who knows what happens with peyton right yeah, I don't know. Don't you think he'd probably rather run a team though than yeah? You look call at Monday Night you football. look at the damage Jason Witten did to <laughs> how good he was as a player one year doing Monday Night Football. Is it really worth it? Well, I mean, I mean Peyton ain't Jason. Witten, I know, no. but I'm just saying, like, say it doesn't go well for Peyton, which I, I imagine it would. I mean, Peyton would. I think Peyton would be awesome. I think Phil Rivers would be very, very good on TV. But as even well. people are turning on Romo now. Everyone are loved Rom- Romo. Yeah. Now everyone's done with him. It's like anything though. Like if you watch somebody enough, you're gonna grow to dislike him probably well i think with romo too a big part of that it's like oh that guy's making 18 million dollars a year that's a big part of it right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 he's making 18 mil he better call out every single play pre-snap he better mm-hmm. predict every single thing happened i'm like well no it's not it's not how it works i mean i think romo's still doing all right i think he's not I'm not sure too worried how many years was his deal did you talked to him about it this weekend i didn't shockingly i did not see uh, i mean maybe i walked by him once or twice but he's out there you know he's real trying to win you couldn't jump on his high horse while he's riding by you <laughs> i don't know what, i don't know what that means but he's you know he's over there like hitting out of the bunkers like on the range which i've never even thought about in my life like, hey, we practice some sand shots but i'm gonna get plenty of sand opportunities out on the course when i'm playing 18. you played it did you play better than you thought you did, though? I mean, Chicago? I looked at the scores. I, the first day, you shot like an 85, right? I was yeah, like, oh, like 80, shit. That's... 88, maybe 86. No, I think you went 82, 88, didn't you? I don't you? think I shot 82, no. Maybe I it was 85. I got worse as the, the three days went. I continued to get worse and worse, but I held off what could have been a complete disaster out there in Tahoe. Um, but, no, I didn't play. You know, you always have the delusion going in, like, man, I put three good days together. I'm going to put some points on the board. <laughs> yeah. Are you playing? Are you guys playing from – the tips or how far do you have uh, any idea not really the tips it's not that long especially with altitude it's not about like length you should have driver wedge into a lot of the holes straight yeah you just got to find a way to hit it straight and you got to putt it's really hard to putt out there the greens are quick there's there's like different levels to the Undulation. greens what well, was it the pin p- pin placement got you they moved on <laughs> the pins on day two and three yeah. i think that's what's uh i mean people would say something to me like oh well you slipped on that one when you you know on that drive you slipped i'm like hey buddy i would love to blame it on me <laughs> slipping but i think i slip almost every single t-shirt shot and that is not the reason that that ball is 600 yards into the woods left <laughs> but it will be a fun journey to try to get yards. that to the reach. Win 600 <laughs> yards though that's what i said hey i'm gonna swing bryson would have blamed it on him slipping oh, bryson on. apologized if anyone knows that bryson went out and said his driver stinks uh he was upset then the cobra rep came back at him which i thought was great and then yeah. bryson apologized to the cobra rep who i believe is the guy that caddied for him in the one tournament right Oh, really? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, actually. he did. Yeah. yeah. That's because I know the Cobra rep stepped in when his caddy quit yeah, on a Wednesday yeah. before a tournament. All kind of crazy stuff happened. In the Open, we don't have it on. Maybe I'll turn it on here for the last hour and a half of the show or whatever. But we're going to get to a break here. We got some huge stuff coming up on the other side, though. Oh, yeah. I told you, I teased earlier, Ty, mm-hmm. about some all-time greats speaking about what their stats may look like. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very if interested. If they played in this game today, to in the current day, we will definitely Rest hit on that a little bit rest. on the other side. Saquon Barkley. Has the biggest, most ripped quads on the planet. All just legs in general. Very, um, man, that Duke could probably squat about 850 and probably touch his butt to the ground. He's so <laughs> flexible. Very impressive. Messi got a billion dollars again. Mm-hmm. But we're going to chat about all that on the other side. So, serious Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. Right. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, I, I got a plane uh, that's supposed to take me down to game day anyway, so I could definitely have it go to Buffalo first. How long is the flight from Indy to Buffalo? You can find us a plane for like 4 o'clock. I think that'll be perfect. Yes, we can do the part around 5, 5.30. Okay, do we have any other, can you find any other planes that can get us out of here? I was just asked if I could appear 
in Buffalo within the next four hours to basically do the show on Fox tonight? Okay, I'll call you back. You know what I'm asking for? Yeah. All right, so he's gonna call Jim Mercy and see if I can just use Jim's jet. He's calling me back shortly, but just start packing. Hey. You're the absolute best. Does this sound like a potential yes you're saying? He's the uh, fucking best. I would be so, so thankful. Hey, this is really cool. I don't know how many billionaires would do this for people that have worked for them in the past. This is awesome, and I can't thank you guys enough. Can I take a kendo stick to his back? Uh, we'll talk about it when you get here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I appreciate you, man. Hey, let's break the fucking internet tonight. <laughs> what a hilarious life. We are live on Fox in six hours and 35 minutes. Three hours of sleep, no clue what the storylines are. Just fucking let the nuts swing, bro. Let's just go out there and have a good time. Plane company. Holy shit. <laughs> I know, I know. Here we go, boys. Oh. All right. Oh. Fox right there tonight. This is gonna be a night we're gonna look back on and remember. And then we're gonna hop on a plane and head to Memphis for college game day. I think this is a joke too, I just want to let you know. Like, this is the Truman Show. I very much understand that this is not supposed to happen. It's like, I got the text at 1.42 p.m. today from Mr. H that says, have you heard there have been some travel issues? Uh, can you make your way to Buffalo? Jim Irsay, owner of the Colts, literally lent me his plane. He might be the most confident I've ever been on it something. I didn't know we were that good of friends, to be honest. I was I was throwing a Hail Mary and he responded and said, yeah. So I got here about an hour and a half before the show and to work with Renee, Tom, and be on SmackDown with a bucket of makeup on my face. This has been a dream come true bucket list type situation here in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Come on, boys, we're gonna be on cable. We're joined here by Pat McAfee, replacing our guest uh, commentator, Aiden English. No sleeves in, George, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it feels good here in Buffalo. I got a text from the game, a cerebral WWE official. He said, hey, you might've heard about the travel issues. Can you make it to Buffalo? I said, absolutely. What a magical evening it is, November 1st, 2019. I mean, let's be honest, the Marine was a heater. You know what I mean? Oh. I mean he's a great actor. He was great on the real world. He was great on all of that. Oh. Take a nerve. <laughs> That's how they do it in NXT, baby. Almost took me out holding another grown lady in the air. November 1st, 2019, greatest SmackDown in the history of SmackDown. Pat, you joining us? It might absolutely be correct the way things have gone here tonight. happening so it's really just natural reaction to everything that was awesome dude that's a bucket that's a real bucket list thing game day bucket list this is like complete bucket list two in one week oh yeah but a horseshoe shoved up my ass and a horseshoe owner lending us a plane <laughs> Welcome back. Friday, July 16th, I believe, is the proper date. I've said it earlier today. Who knows? I am AJ Hawk, sitting in for Pat McAfee here, live from Indy, on this nice feel-good Friday, as they like to call it around here. And before the break, we were talking about something. We are talking about some, some former greats, some all-time greats, all-time great athletes, when you just look at athletes around the world. And they had some opinions on how they think they would do in the modern-day NFL we got a graphic up here to show. So I'm going to read Bo Jackson first. Bo says, if I played during this era, I'd probably be averaging 350 to 400 yards a game. Does he mean total, like catching the ball as far as running the ball? Maybe he's returning. He turned kicks, too? I don't well, know. Well, that's, that's different because if you're counting kicks. And if you're averaging 350 to 400, it's pretty good. I, okay. <laughs> but then he goes to Dan Marino. When asked in 2019... How many TDs he could throw in today's game? Dan Marino says 62. How many did he throw when he was playing? 50? 48, I think, was his highest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was the most last year thrown by a quarterback in the NFL? Do we know? The record I know is 55 by Peyton. I believe 62. Last year, Raj threw, what, 48? And I think that was tops in the NFL. Okay. I mean, Dan Marino, you know what? Him saying 62, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. But then here we go. Jerry Rice. I probably might 
be able to double everything. <laughs> Can you look at how many touchdowns and career yards Jerry Rice has? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, a lot of times when people talk about receivers, they say Jerry is the GOAT, all-time great. Jerry has an energy drink called Goat Energy. Oh, wow. I drank some out in Lake Tahoe. He how gave was me a it? Can. Delicious. Great. He brought me a can that actually was the same color as my shirt I was wearing. Wow. I'm like, Jerry, your attention to detail, this is why you are the GOAT at wide receiver. Did he ask you if you like tailgating? It's amazing. <laughs> Shockingly, <laughs> we did not get on to tailgating, but I knew he was the MVP of tailgating. <laughs> yep. I think this is just regular season, but um, 1,500 receptions, 23,000 yards, 197 touchdowns. So just call it 400 400? touchdowns, 46,000 yards, and 3,000 receptions, maybe. I mean, 3,000 receptions. That's a lot, and I don't. I don't mean any disrespect to Jerry Rice, but that I think that may be inflated a little bit. He might, yeah, he'd have a two hundred receptions a year for fifteen years. I mean, I, I never want to doubt Jerry, but also it was a little different time back then. They didn't yeah. play as much like bump and run, get up on you. It was more zone coverage, I think. So you had to find your spots. He obviously was beating guys deep all the time, and just a crafty guy, tough as nails. We know that. Also, though, I guess to Jerry's credit, back then you could beat up receivers a lot more than you can now. I don't know if he got beat up that much at the line. I don't think he did. But, you know, like everything changed. What year was that when kind of the, the Colts were getting beat up by the Patriots and they changed things around? And Early 2000s? They really started saying, like, you cannot touch this guy past five yards. Early 2000s, probably? probably? Yeah, because that was when – yeah, that's when they had – Peyton and Reggie and Marvin. I assume, mm. yeah, I assume early 2000s. I guess to I think but, it was like 2003 to be a little more. Yeah, it, it had to be around there. But to Jerry's defense, though, honestly, he was playing back in the day when if you caught a ball across the middle, they were allowed to take your face off and literally try to kill you. So I guess he does have some things going for him on his side. I think saying you would double what you did. I mean, if you had Aaron Rodgers throwing to Jerry Rice in today's current NFL, yeah, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, uh, 200 touchdowns, a lot of touchdowns. That's uh, very, yeah. very productive. It's amazing Jerry <laughs> yeah. uh, stays so humble after everything he's done. <laughs> you don't have to. What does he have, three four rings? He's got the Hall of Fame ring that he always has on when he's taking pictures, too. Mm -hmm. You'll see him, man. You don't have to be humble if you're Jerry. And he, Jerry just knows. He's not He's not arrogant. He's just confident, Gump. You know that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. It's like, it's you always say that. I was saying it's amazing he stays so humble. You say that about your boy Trudeau up in Canada. You say <laughs> he's not arrogant. He's just very confident in his capabilities, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are you a citizen yet? What's that? Are you a citizen of this country yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Are you officially? No. Yeah. no. Yes, you will be, though. Yeah, someday, my friend. But you're here legally. Everything's going well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you're doing great. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, Sorry if we aired any dirty laundry. Yeah. Just yeah. cut this one yeah. out. Yeah. Gump is great. Don't yeah. worry. AJ, Trudeau, all... he's a big fan of yours. Trudeau, everyone up there, <laughs> Gump is an absolute supporter of what you're doing there, so please leave him alone. What's up, Evie? AJ, Evan? this is something that's <laughs> going to happen Evie. forever, though. Old heads Evie. will Evie. always... Evie. That's what my mom calls me. Hey, <laughs> him, and, him, and, him and Jason McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this will happen forever, right? Old heads are, uh, oh, yeah. will always say their generation was the best. And yep. If they were playing now, they, like you probably say, if I'm playing now, I'll probably have 500 tackles a game. AJ, I don't know. Defensively, that. I don't know if the defenders will say that. Other than, Defenders will mainly say, like, oh, it's not like it used to be. It's not The guys aren't tough like we used to be. We had, we had four days, and we killed each other in practice, and – we could do all this stuff. Now you can't, you're taking all that away from defenders. True. I guess it's the other way around for you. A lot of guys are saying, I wouldn't be able to play in today's yeah, game I mean, because you, of that. Think of some of those hard-hitting safeties. Like, think of... Right. I mean, even yeah, you used to fucking body yeah. guys, AJ. Give it a rest, well, you man. You're to. a fucking mud out there. Well, because <laughs> I was smaller than most people, so you had to find a way to not just get run over and get killed. But, I, yeah, I think of Ronnie Lott. Fucking Rod Woodson. Think even of, of Bob Sanders. That dude's uh, an absolute yeah. missile. Steve like, Atwater, oh. dude. Now, Steve Atwater, that is who that guy was scary. Like, I, I would get worried for guys on the other team when Steve Atwater was laying the wood because he's fun to watch, man. But that's what we want to see, right? John Lynch. Oh, John Lynch. Yeah, I got, I was number 47 in college. I didn't pick that number, but they gave it to me. And I instantly said, Sweet, I love John Lynch. <laughs> that's all I thought of. So I was, I was channeling my John Lynch. Who, who'd you play with at safety in Green Bay? Because there was. Nick Collins, absolute yeah, monster. monster, runs like a four-two and could cover so much ground. But unfortunately, I had a, got a neck injury. Um, I remember the game against Carolina uh, early. Man, he was done way too soon. Yeah, yeah. Pick Nick six Collins, in the Super Bowl, huge, huge play. Oh man, Atari Bigby is another guy I played with who was an absolute headhunter mm -hmm. back there. 
very, very fun to watch. Even, hey, Charles Woodson played safety yeah. and kind of like a nickel late in his career. And that Charles was not scared to get in there. Charles is a great blitzer. He would take on fullbacks. Like Charles is one of those guys. He's so rare, has crazy ball skills, crazy coverage, very, very smart, but also very, very physical, which – you don't really see that too much, do you? First ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, easy. I you mean, know. not even a question. Charles will have a good speech, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Charles would be good. He was out in Tahoe. Well, he invite he? you to go? I think I beat him, actually. Really? He's only oh. been playing golf for a little bit. I don't play much. He's got the whiskey business. Yeah, and he, he's had wine for a long time. Now mm -hmm. he's into whiskey. I mean, Charles, he's a hustler. How come you even started up any businesses? What should I start? What do you think, Probably dudes? a cigar company. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Mike I think Taylor it, did it. Did he? Yeah. yeah. When he, he, Ray Where'd Lewis has a cigar. I see it when I go to the store sometimes. Theoryantler.com. No, I don't know about that. Does that work? Dude. Have you, you should try it for the game tomorrow. Yeah. Does anyone have any deer antler spray we can get digs for the game? You know they're not testing. I think you got a little on the desk up there. This one? This the throat stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. This is Pat's dry throat and hoarse voice spray, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it works. I don't think it works. I love much. how they cracked down on deer antler spray. Like, that was changed in Ray Lewis. Well, you remember VJ Singh, the golfer, got caught oh, up yeah. in deer, deer yeah. antler spray as well. What was it supposed to do? Naturally raise your testosterone? Yeah. Does it work? I've, does, I've, I have not tried it, surprisingly. I wonder. I mean, I see... I just no don't feel trouble, like though, right? spraying something like that. I don't know. He was trying to come back from an injury, Gumpy. He was getting advantage. He was trying to heal faster. Yeah, post, there was a lot of other stuff, not deer antler spray. I mean, who knows if it actually works? There's a lot of stuff out there that doesn't work. I mean, the yeah. majority of stuff you see on, in commercials at GNC, it doesn't work. Like, what about Frank Thomas? Frank's taking the... Uh, Nugenics. Yeah, that. Remember, like, the, the gal starts eyeballing him and her husband's with him, too, and Frank's about to take the guy's wife from him? I guess yeah. like, that's a scary commercial, isn't yeah. it? Big hurt, baby. It's crazy how a big good, hurt. More good he looks one, huh? just from Nugenics. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah. Is he still on uh, Fox? Yeah. Is he? Him and uh, Is Ortiz and A-Rod. And then Pete Rose got the axe a couple years back, right? I, don't th I didn't see Big Hurt at the uh, All-Star game, though. I didn't either. What do you think about J Lo uh, dumping A Rod and going back to Ben? I mean, hey, good. Benefer, <laughs> Benefer needs another run, don't they? Yeah. Did she dump A Rod though? Do we know? Oh yeah. It yeah. certainly appears as if she dumped A Rod. So who is A Rod? You ever ran now? into him, Alex Rodriguez? I have never ran into him. I am very intrigued at what Alex Rodriguez is though, like and who he is. I think he's great on TV. He's reinvented himself. So I would love to meet the guy. Rumor has it he is dating Ben's ex. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. They, were, they were seen together. Touche. So. Good move, Yeah. Rod. Well, he's been taking it in the shins. I mean, every time the picture <laughs> pops up, uh, Ben and J-Lo making out, it's just so, smacking A-Rod right in the face. So Ben and J-Lo, I saw a <laughs> big sports show. <laughs> they they were seen shopping for houses upwards of $65 million, I heard. Jeez, Did you guys geez. see that? No. no. Don't know if that's true or not. So, okay, do they split that 50-50? I would assume no, J-Lo is picking up more. the bigger part of yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He spent a lot of money on Dunkins and smokes. Dude. I know. I love are those are those current pictures you see of of Affleck smoking heaters and coming out like, outside current. his gate of That's his house. Pretty current, is it? The guy were cigarettes dead in the NFL when you were in the NFL? Yeah, unfortunately they were. I just got to talk to my coaches. They are the ones that would talk about walking into the locker room with just a haze in there and everything. Like we had a coach that played for the Raiders back in the day. He's like, oh man. He in the Raiders weren't his first team. He came from somewhere else that was kind of buttoned up and everything. He goes, I got to, I went to Oakland and it was unbelievable. I walk in day one, it was like a movie. We had twenty five guys smoking cigs, like <laughs> half, like at halftime. I think guys were smoking cigs, and he said like that. I don't know what year it would have been, but that was the end of like the, uh, you know, those the golden era, the golden era of <laughs> football. That'd be awesome if that happened. If that, I mean, I shouldn't say awesome. It would be fun to see. If someone tried to reinvent that, I mean, when you watch the the Last Dance, Michael Jordan smoked cigars yeah. every single situation he is mm -hmm. ever in, mm -hmm. places where you can't smoke. I feel like, and Jordan smoking with his uniform on. So maybe there'll be an NFL player that comes along that has that kind of power. The last guy who could have done it was Cutler. You think? <laughs> I mean, Tom Brady could, don't you think? Tom I, would never do that. Yeah. He would never put poison in his body. <laughs> but Tom could, I feel like, with BA, Tom could kind of get away with whatever he wants. I think Big Mike could bring it back. What, Big Mike smoking cigs? Yeah, just smoking cigs down in Dallas. Big you know, Mike should wear, the, should wear the Landry hat to go full old school. He should. Big Mike loves like the paper boy hats like Bryson That's, wears. Yeah. Bryson's on the TV right now. He's plus one. Is he going to miss the cut at the open? Plus one is the cut line, I believe. He has a big putt on 17 for par as we speak. His arms are very straight. 
Let's see if he makes it. If not, hopefully he throws that putter about 80 yards. <laughs> oh, he oh, drains. Can't it. Drain. Can't so it. what's he at? He's so plus, plus one. one so he's right the on the cut line. Okay. Yeah. Man, the, the, do you guys watch the Open? Oh, British yeah. Open? It's nice oh, to yeah. wake up to. And you oh, just yeah, kinda yeah, like, they, I was take, looking take at the times. Take it easy on the, uh, the British Open. It's the Open. The so Open you, Championship. They, they do get not upset. like that. they re- really upset, right? Yeah, because yeah, sometimes it's in Scotland, sometimes it's in Ireland. I get it. I understand they're, why they're upset. I mean, I'll, I'll call it the Open from here on out. Louis Oostenhuizen, as <laughs> Pat likes to say, uh, is doing very, very well. This is round two. Nick, what do you think? You think Louis going to keep this up? <laughs> Well, I'm a man who likes to study history, AJ, Mm -hmm. and I like to look at the past to see things that we can further push back into the future and predict upon and rely upon that information. And if that tells us anything, it's Louis going to choke on a big fat one here coming up in a day or two. He will finish in second. He's, (laughs) I mean, I hope Louis didn't hear this. That would really hurt my confidence if I heard someone like you, you know, bring up some things that have made me fail. He's finished at second at. Uh, the Masters, the U.S. Open, the PGA, but he did actually win the Open. Yeah, it's pretty damn seven. good. I tell you what, he's very he consistent. Don't we want to be consistent? Yeah, we I love Louis, Do you? but some of us aren't destined for the spotlight. Some of us aren't <laughs> destined to be the number one draw and the, and the winner and the, and the champion. Well, Sometimes Louis, you got to take a you know you got to ride shotgun. I guess, but Louis, they always talk about where where is he from? He likes to get on South his Africa. he goes down to his tractor and Super. he farms. He's a legit farmer. I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, South Africa. He's the Jordy Nelson of the PGA Tour. Yeah, <laughs> South Africa. Pretty Good much. for him. Hey, we're going to get to the callers real quick. Well, I want to get to this guy. Let's go to Dabs in North Carolina here. If I can get to you, probably not. If anyone wants to <laughs> dial him up. Mitt, put Dabs I on. I got you. Hey, Dabs, what's on your on. mind, bud? Hey, how you doing, guys? Happy Feel Good Friday. Hey, good to, good to hear you. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just want to first uh, confirm a lot of things from AJ. First of all, I worked with uh, your buddy, Coach Anthony Schlegel, who's at Jacksonville right now, with three years at Ohio State. He is absolutely the man. He is the guy. Everything that you say about him is true. <laughs> and also, I wanted to throw out uh, to confirm what you said about you guys getting gear at Ohio State and how stringent they are. I was with uh, Louis Van House for, for a long time, and uh, he was definitely not easy on giving out gear to the guys. Uh, I did have a question. Uh, Probably because of Terrell Pryor. <laughs> I was before Terrell. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry about that, well, Dabs. What do you got? For the team when the tattoo memorabilia gig thing happened. Oh, nice. What? What? Uh, what? You, what kind of question do you have, bud? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, I have a lot of experience in strength and conditioning at the collegiate level, uh, as I just said. So, AJ. Uh, you can you can best answer this question. What would you say is the b- biggest difference between the strength coaching, strength experience in the NFL when you went from college, you know, first in college and then to the NFL? Hell yeah! Hey, appreciate the call, Dabs. Um, Let's get into it, AJ. Let's get some workout talk, dude. I love it. Hey, everybody loves workout yeah. talk. Uh, Unfortunately, tips. we got a hard out coming uh, in a few minutes, but we can yeah. dive into this yeah. a little bit. Maybe we'll touch on it in the third hour. <laughs> Ooh. Gump, if you want to, we can come back to it. But Pat yeah. has said on the show a million times. You spend the most time with your strength coaches. Like you are with them every day at some point. And so you develop very, very hopefully good relationships with those guys. But in college, there's so many players. Like you have what, 90 players? How many can they have now? I think you probably Mm -hmm. have. You can have over 100 now, I think, on the team. So they have a lot of people they got to work through. So everything, it's not as specialized for guys, especially in your younger, dealing with people that have less wear and tear on their bodies. In the NFL, when you meet with your strength coach and you go over what your plan may be, they're. There can't be like a one-size-fits-all plan workout thrown out there because, say, I'm coming in as a rookie. This strength coach is also coaching a couple O linemen that have been in the league 13 years that have had four back surgeries and are getting a knee replacement two years from now. So you have to kind of cater it to each player, and the great ones do that. That's what Schlegel's doing down in Jacksonville right now. I've talked to him about it. They spend a lot of time trying to personalize the workouts, trying to figure out exactly what works for each guy. And you only have what you have – 53 active, you only have mm-hmm. maybe 60-some guys you're dealing with, so it's less volume, less people, and you have at least two or three of assist- assistants to help you. So it's definitely different. It's more of like uh, college is more like, hey, this is the coach. Shut up. Listen to him. 
you have no say, which now it's different. Players have more power. In the NFL, it's more of like a collaborative effort. Like, well, hey, what, what can we do to get better? You probably got treated a little different, right? Because you're a big swinging dick, big man on campus. <laughs> you know, you're going to be a fucking top 10 pick. I mean, so it's like, hey, let AJ, you know, do what he wants. I was lucky to have some teammates that I'd loved working out with, Anthony Schlegel and Bobby Carpenter. <laughs> so, yeah, we were the meat crew, crew and going around there um, working out. And then when I got in the NFL, Rock Gullickson is a guy who was my strength coach at first. He moved on after that, went to a few other teams, and Mark Lavat was the head strength coach who I still talk to all the time. Awesome guy. He is not like the prototypical guy you see in the sideline pumping people up, wearing mm -hmm. a cutoff, going crazy. He is very calm, very quiet, very like methodical, and I have a lot of respect for him when it comes to He's actually a stud baseball player, Diggs. He played at Butler. Cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. There Second base, shortstop a little bit. So a lot in, in the vein of maybe we'll call him up in the third hour, see go. if he has any advice for you tomorrow in the big game. I think the people have heard enough about what I'm doing this Hey, weekend. you got to wear the cowboy hat, though. You have to. I will. How will we be able to find you if you don't have the hat on? True. Good point. Is it being streamed somewhere? Has to be. I don't believe be. so. We'll find it. CBS. Can we'll we send, like, Bill, can Billy go over there and, and just hold his phone up and stream it for us? I don't want Bill there. Why not? You don't want Bill around you either. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I saw Bill today, talked to him, seemed cool. I see. I think I'm going to live. <laughs> I think cool. I'm going to make it. You know what? Hey, we got one more hour left. Hopefully people come on back. We have a lot of great things coming up. Sirius XM, Channel 82, Pat McAfee Show. We'll see you in a little bit. Yeah, dude, that's, what am I supposed to do here? Fuck, dude. Like, what are we supposed to do? People should not tell me this stuff. They know they should. Can't do it. Our sources have told us that Mac Jones ain't going three. What? Oh my God. I mean, it seems like Trey Lance is going at three. Draft odds changed dramatically. Odds have just changed, by the way. Before you went on air, Mac Jones was minus 270, I believe, and Trey Lance was plus 280. Uh, uh, now Trey Lance is plus 105. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Mac Jones not going to the Niners news was just the tip of the iceberg with me and sources. Insert Jay Glazer at the first commercial break. Yes, How the hell am I supposed to hold that in? From what we've been potentially told, there's some things cooking. I've heard something's <laughs> yeah. cooking right now, by the way. I don't know what's real and what isn't real. <laughs> Come on! Something <laughs> big! Yeah. Huge! Huge! Huge. We got two hours and 19 minutes on it. Why? But three hours later, guess what happened? Aaron Rodgers is on the move. Hashtag J New, dude. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Aaron yeah. Rodgers is so disgruntled with Green Bay Packers that he has told some within the organization that he does not want to return to the team. Ty. Ty. I mean, you alienate the fucking guy. No wonder he doesn't want to fucking come back. He's done. It's over. That's the end of it. Negligence from the top of the organization to the bottom. You had to do something. You had to do something. And they didn't do a goddamn thing. So I don't blame him. I didn't know that's how that whole thing was going to come out. Me neither. I didn't know that was going to be it. That's the Packers definitely releasing that information. A thousand percent. Oh, yeah. And that's Aaron telling them, by the way, I ain't fucking coming back. Aaron probably was like, I ain't fucking coming back. So Green Bay probably trying to save tail here. I said, Schefter, we need you to write an article about how things are going right now yeah. from our point of view with Aaron Rodgers. He has all he the cards. Yeah, exactly. He has all the cards. Imagine if he goes to a place where he has just as many weapons as everybody else and has a full organization that's like all the way behind him. They'll fucking win. This is fucking insane. And then finally, it becomes time for our biggest event of the year. Hello and welcome to the second annual NFL Draft Spectacular. Yeah! Wow. Trey Lance is gone. Let's go. Let's go. Ladies and Gentlemen, I beat you, dude. You owe $20,000. Thanks for playing, AJ. Leo Jones is a Colt by the end of tonight. You can't control him, Tim. Dan's lying, Dan. Stop being a hater, Dan. I mean, obviously, it's great competition. You know, not just Pat, though. You know, Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, you know, Clyde, you know, all these guys. There's always things that are taken out of context, but there's always things that maybe aren't. You never know. JJ, you're the best. Hey, Mad Mel, dude. Great to be back, AJ. Great to see you. Good to see you're still a sack of shit like you were last year. Don't L you listen, have to listen, wear a jock listen, strap Chris. Hey, I've never worn a jock strap, but I've sniffed plenty of them, so I know what's going on with these <laughs> players, okay? I don't give a fuck. Who cares? I just want to eat. Zito, did we get that food <laughs> order? With boots on the ground in Cleveland, Jason Glazer. Jason Glazer, your thoughts? Well, obviously, I knew 
this was gonna happen. The other person probably didn't know the cop this was gonna go here. No, you have in the studio. That's what live you go. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And then let me talk, let me talk, let me talk. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. What if this works? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. 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 I
they want to be involved in everything, like every decision, everything, because I, I would too if I was the head coach. It's my chance. It's my one shot. I want to make sure that I'm doing things the right way. But I thought it was a bit interesting that he's saying that. But aren't there some guys from the Giants coming out to support Coughlin now too? Yeah, I think so. Then Brandon Jacobs said something. Yeah. But also it wasn't – I mean, they well, the NFLPA said that the Jaguars had like 85% of the uh, complaints against them. Yeah. So Coughlin was obviously pissing off like multiple guys. So I guess – I mean, it makes a little Marone bit Marone had to be sense. on board then too. Obviously, if Marone is the head coach and they were doing things in OTAs and all that – the head well, coach they were fining guys, right, for not oh, showing right. up or whatever yeah. it was. And then they got – didn't they get fined from the league or they got practices taken away because their OTAs and their offseason was too physical mm-hmm. or too long or whatever? But they kind of had success quick, remember? Like, they, they were close. They lost that to That was when pa- Bortles went to the AFC Championship. Yeah, yeah. Right? they were close to getting to a Super half. Bowl. So they probably just kept rolling that same program and they started losing. Everyone's like, I ain't down with this Could, anymore. Yeah. Could that be Coughlin because he was a coach for so long with – an older era, just like having no idea how to treat the new era of players. It's definitely possible. I know we've seen guys like Nick Saban come out and talk about how it's a different world now. It's a different game. You got to score points offensively. They recruit differently. So if you're not willing to evolve, I guess, yeah, you could run into some issues, but that's the thing, Gump. Like when you're winning, you can get away with anything. Exactly. If you're like Bill Belichick, people, Cassius Mars comes out and says, how oh, it's not fun. He doesn't like the way things are going. It doesn't matter. If you're winning, guys are going to have to put up with it. They will, but it's a fine line, though, because then you start losing. How long until you start to lose the team? And it sounds like even though Coughlin wasn't the head coach, he kind of lost the locker room in Jacksonville. Did you ever have uh, – I, mean, I, I mean, I think you'd, you would have told us by now, but you never had a situation like that while you were playing, did you, where you could feel like, oh, this guy's losing these guys? And, I mean – No, I didn't. I was lucky. So my first year in Green Bay was Mike McCarthy's first year as a head mm-hmm. coach. His first year there – and we knew right away who was in charge. He's the boss, whatever. But he did a great job of letting people be individuals, let them kind of let their personality show. He would tell us, like, hey, this is your team. I want you guys to take control of this. All the great teams I've been around are run from the inside. The coaches aren't dictating everything that has to happen. They're not the, the coach shouldn't have to hold people accountable. And I think that was a great thing to hear from him early on in his career. And he kind of he was always on top of it though. I think he would know. Like he's always behind the scenes trying to figure out should I push push a little more today? Should I back mm-hmm. off today? And players know that. And I think over time players respect that. And we were winning a lot of football games. Right. We had Aaron Rodgers as the quarterback. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you better win a lot of games. Where was uh who was your coach when you were there for a little bit in Atlanta? Uh DQ, Dan Quinn. The and man. That early on he was He was the man. That was their Super Bowl year. So I so when Cassius Marsh was talking about if you heard or read anything when he yeah. said to Be Tom careful. Segura He's like, I came from Pete Carroll where we're shooting hoops every day. We're doing all these competitions. There's fast pace. There's music all the time. It's fun to New England. They do it a lot different. So I went to Atlanta for a month, basically, and very first team meeting, there's music blaring as I'm walking. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I remember I sat by Dwight Freeney. I'm like, oh, cool. Dwight Freeney's on the top. <laughs> like, he was a stud, too. And he's like, he even told me, he's like, man, you're going to wish you got here a lot earlier. <laughs> and like, meeting got to a team like yeah. this. He doesn't say anything about any former team I was on, but he was saying, like, it's pretty awesome around here. And first thing, Dan Quinn comes running in, high energy guy. There's a hoop. He, he calls out a couple guys. They shoot hoops. They have like a competition quickly, like free throws to see who was going to get something special that day after practice. They even had the trainer one day dress up in full hockey gear. He was a Canadian. Gump, shout out to you. There you go. And guys took shots on him on a goal. Oh, nice. This is team meeting stuff that most coaches would be like, hey, this is precious time. Yeah, we, yeah. Can't, we can't even speak of anything other than the game plan in this meeting. So I've got to see both of those things too. And I would say Green Bay is like a, a mixture of that. It's still a lot of fun, but also still down to business. There's not like the crazy over-the-top music at, at practice, all that stuff. Do you think – that type of coach, you have to be winning though. Like because if you're losing and doing that shit, do you lose respect? Like, yeah, or is you it- just lose guys. Like in college, maybe you can handle it for a little bit, but I even think players are taking more control in college where they they won't put up with it. You could lose the team, and players want to be coached. Even new age guys, like they want they want to be coached hard. They want to be held accountable because it's like being a parent. I got four young kids. My kids may hate it. They may hate when I tell them they can't do something or this or that, but they ultimately want me to be engaged and want me to be there and and care about it and if you feel like if somebody is reprimanding me if he's coming to me and sit me down and saying hey you're you're not doing it right at least you know that person cares like no one wants them to just be like you don't want your coach to be indifferent towards you or feel like they're indifferent towards you so there's all different ways to do it 
But if you win, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah, do you I think I think more than ever, you're seeing everybody starting to realize there's more than one way to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everyone thought there's forever. no yeah. There's no black and white thing. Hey, this is what you yeah. have to do from the top down if you want to be a championship team. Absolutely not. Because if you're if you're Bill Belichick, guess what? For those 20 years, you got Tom Brady too. So. Tom Brady's making all the plays, and he also is on board, it sounds like, for the majority of his career with the whole Patriot Way thing, even though they don't talk about that. But he that's all he knew, too. That's all Tom knew. So he probably didn't know a lot of what was going on outside there. So if you win, you can get away with it. But I think we're definitely shifting away from that as younger coaches come up. But I'm sure we dealt with this over the years, right? Like what happened back in the – like in the mid '70s, when a new coach would take over, were they saying like, "Oh, this new age guy is coming in, and yeah. it's not going to be tough anymore"? Were they doing it then? Probably not. But like for the other way around too. Then like so, you know, Michael Brocker said yesterday that like, hey, Dan Campbell and like this staff, they actually communicate with guys. <laughs> They're very open. Like we love it. We haven't seen anything like this. At what point? If they start the season 0 oh, and 9 or whatever, is it like, well, you know, yeah, they talk to us, but Dan Campbell's a big dumb dipshit. And we need to get him out of here. I sure? hope it doesn't happen. I hope it doesn't happen because I, I love Dan happened. Campbell. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we forward, need yeah. we need Dan Campbell to be successful. Yeah, He's I good agree. for the league. I agree. He is great for the league. He's great for Detroit, for Jared Goff. Like, I think it's going to be fun to watch. But, yeah, how many games do you think? How long until, like, people say, like, all right, man. I like this. This is cool. Respect you. You got to change this up. This is not working. I think it gets a, does it get year? a year. Yeah, but everything can turn so quick. Like, look at Flores. Everyone loved him in Miami. Yeah. Then he makes that call to put two in. Everyone goes, what is this guy doing? He's a maniac. You know it what I mean? It can change so quick. It can so change quick. so fast. It's the same thing on, like, coaches that are in line to be, like, the next head coach. Like, say you're a hot coordinator mm -hmm. and you start interviewing for jobs and you don't get them. Then all of a sudden, it's like they forget about you and the next batch of young guys are coming up that are going to get those head coaching gigs. So how do you maximize your opportunity when you're there? What's his name? Uh, New England OC. Like, I don't... Like Daniels. 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 I don't, you don't hear his name anymore at all in any of the head coaches. I think people just, assume he's going to take over for Bill, don't they? But, I mean, it, there's no guarantee that's going to happen. No, that's Patricia. He's making all the calls oh, these days. <laughs> I did hear Patricia mentioned when they were talking on TV about them. They're saying Patricia, his, his title is like assistant to the head coach, right? Yeah, he's doing what uh, Lombardi used to do pretty much. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So what does that mean? Like you deal front yeah, office? Do has what, Bill's ear. Yeah, you basically do whatever Bill tells you to do. And, like, you come up, like, you do all the research, I guess, that Bill wants so to do. So is he out there coaching guys on the field though uh i know lombardi was not but patricia who has been a coach i assume may yeah did bill have somebody in that role before patricia came i don't back? know that's what i wonder because like ernie is probably that position too right or no yeah ernie I'm may have hired. So. he's gone right after this year oh yeah this is last season that, yeah. so that was his last draft right okay yes. man i don't know like i wonder and that is Patricia obviously doing that to try to position himself to become a coordinator somewhere else? I think Patricia just needed a job. Like yeah, if, I just if, want if to the, get back if into If the it. Patriots didn't take him back, I don't see him going anywhere else. Bama might have. I wonder. Yeah, you could always go to Nick Saban and <laughs> yeah. get your career back. Because now Bielema is what, head coach of Illinois? Is he? Is he? Uh, Am I right there? I thought Lovey was. was no, nah, Lovey, Lovey got shit canned. Lovey got canned. I think Bielema is the I head coach might be for right. Illinois. You might want to fact check me on that. I am. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, where you go, right? right? Yeah, right. so you go there and, man, I think you got a multi-year deal. Good for Bielema. Yeah, you can go there and revamp your whole career, right? And why is, I guess because Saban is so respected and everyone, Saban is like, it's like what the Patriots were to the NFL is what Saban is in college yeah. to where I know, at least for me personally, I've always said, man, I, I wish I knew what it was like to play for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. I wish I knew what it was like to be there for maybe a year. Well, it also seems like in college there are like 50 open jobs every single year yeah. that are actually pretty good. So, like, guys know that, like, okay, if I get shit canned in the league, I just got to go down. I'll win a national championship, and then maybe I'll go, you know, be the head coach at Mississippi or Mississippi State or something. Yeah, there's a lot more jobs in college that you could take. You just got to know, like, hey, man, I got to recruit now. It's a different mm -hmm. world. That's why every NFL coach – that I would talk to that came from college, they said, "There's no way in hell I'm going back. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have to put a gun to my head to get me back going back to college, just because they don't want to recruit." Like in the off season, if you're an NFL coach, it's almost like a nine to five. Like it's cool. You could you could hang out. You could see your family. You can go watch one of your kids' games in college. Man, you're on the road. You're you're hosting recruits all winter at basketball games. It's a grind. I don't know how they do it. And I have a lot of. A lot of friends I played with that are coaching in college right now. Do so you, you think him? Harbaugh will go back to the NFL, or do you think he'll stay in college? I don't, how old is Harbaugh? Do we know? 50-something? I assume so. 
Do you say, is there any chance that Harbaugh, whenever he's done with Michigan, just doesn't coach anymore? No. He's 57. It's in his blood. Guy needs football. I mean, coach is coach. I say all the time, coaches want to die with a clicker in their hand in their office. That's like their dream to be found that way, like just <laughs> dead. Oh, and the film's still running. <laughs> <laughs> in his little notepad of your new, like, hey, he the guy's like writing, probably wrote a little note on the top. Of, hey, if I die tonight, make sure you tell the players about this little tip <laughs> I figured out. Make sure you get this point across to them. We're going to head out to the five hour energy phone lines yeah. right i don't okay. think i properly give them the credit that they deserve but five hour energy we love you guys and, and we appreciate you being here but you know what let's go to amanda in wisconsin amanda what's on your mind hi i was just wondering what um you and you and the boys think of Giannis with the the block on during the milwaukee bucks game uh, on game four well, Amanda, appreciate the call. Great block. Huh? A hell of a block. Hell right, block. guys? A hell of was block. that the turning point of the, of the series? Is that yes. what they're already talking about? A lot of yeah. people are saying There that. was other shows calling it the uh, greatest block in NBA playoff history. Uh, LeBron's block. I'd imagine LeBron's going to argue with that, right? Undefeated, dude. Disagree, it, that, that moment in that game, <laughs> you'll never top that play. Diggs, why do you disagree? Well, LeBron's was a normal chase down block that we've seen a billion times. Normal. Giannis, <laughs> was, Giannis was defending two people and blocked a seven footer about 12 feet above the rim. So, you know. And it was, his reaction was pretty impressive, too, because it was an oop, right? It and to Giannis an doesn't have a movie that's going to stink this weekend oh. coming out. So. Hey, but speaking of that, when does, oh, when does Space Jam 2 come out? It's hot. Tonight. 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 Reviews are it in. right when I get home. Reviews are in, and it stinks. Oh. Are there reviews? Can we read some reviews? Are you serious? Oh, no, I have no idea. We don't, I don't think the reviews are. I mean, little I'm kids sure, don't write sure re are. reviews. Mitt said he's going to see it tonight. Mitt, Mitt are you anywhere near a mic? Oh, I would be I'll, remiss if wait, I did not I'll, get I'll you go, on the show. Do I have to go to a movie theater to see this movie? No, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, okay. You should, though. It's on you HBO should, though, Max. Fox. Hey. You should. Uh, no. If it's on HBO theater. Max, I'm definitely watching it tonight. Is it on HBO Max? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How I'm going to watch it tonight. Do, know? Hey, Mitt, do you know about the first one? The first what? Space Jam with Michael yeah. Jordan? Yeah, I used to have that. That was one of the movies I had in my uh, mom's minivan, so I watched it about ten times in like every fucking year. Are you in the huddle right now, Mitt? He doesn't know where he's at right now. Like, oh, Mitt, I tell you what, oh, Mitt, oh, Mitt's running away from there, but Mitt oh, keeps no. me informed on what's going on in the NFL. It's got so. a 35% on Rotten Tomatoes. So that's oh, pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. I didn't know about the franchise tag date until I read Mitt's tweet the other day. And he said in it, like, hey, a lot of people are going to forget about this. <laughs> that's sure money. Do that's it. what money Mitt does. Mitt really paints a picture with his words, oh, yeah. whether they're typed or they come out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, he's the best. And I respect him for that. Kind of like one of those great writers back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Like, Hemingway, um, R.L. Stein, <laughs> Bill Bill Bernstein. Yeah. Yeah. Who wrote Bernstein Bears? Yeah. Bill Bernstein. Yeah. Bill, <laughs> William Bernstein. William <laughs> Bernstein. Hey, so John Rom pivoting to the open guys. <laughs> yeah. John Rom was he the favorite coming into this? Yes. Yeah. yeah, he was. Just because he's been playing so well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But does golf work that way? I mean, I know like, when you're hot, you're hot, but it's a major. It's different once you get there. He's European. He's from Spain, right? Yeah. But he went to Arizona State. Yes. Yeah. Speaks very, very good English. Mm -hmm. How old is he? 26? So, uh, he's only 26? I, I mean, believe so. golfers yeah, are crazy. Because of what they have to wear, every golfer looks 25 26. years older than they actually are. Yeah, he's 26. That's, That's why wild. it's crazy. If you see a golfer wearing, like, after the round, they'll show him, like, in workout gear, like, mesh shorts and a shirt. You're like, oh, there's a kid. He's yeah. a kid. But... <laughs> When he's on the course, it looks like my grandpa. Like, it's just golf is weird that way, man. We were talking about it before the show. It also, it seems like guys will play good for like a full calendar year. Like, they'll be competitive in all the majors. And then the next year, like, just won't be anywhere near the top 20 or whatever. Like, it's weird how it works like that. But he is in just a, a groove right now. Yeah, he just had a kid. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that's propelling him. He got COVID, pulled survived, out. Survived COVID. There you go. Yeah. 18th uh, Green at the Memorial took a, a Sky Ambulance. Is that yes, right? Sky mm -hmm. Ambulance. A Sky Ambulance all the way home to Arizona, I believe. Mm -hmm. That was not a, that was not cheap. That's for sure. Man, I don't know. You thought he was flying like he was standing in line at Southwest. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I said he's. They all got NetJets deal. They got hour. They got cards. They. I figured, hey man, if he puts a mask on, the pilots close the door. He yeah. can just walk on up and get in the back. They do all of NetJets deals, but. Foxy had a Wheels next Jets deal with Pat for one weekend, and they had to fly one of those prop planes. And I know they were not. Oh, Foxy was on. not thrilled about those it. Prop, prop planes was probably a King Air though. That's a big old prop. That was plane. actually a different flying company, and it was a little bit sketchy. I will admit. Oh, don't be scared of the prop. Don't be scared of the small planes. No, I'm not. Honestly, You'll be good. I, I don't get scared. I mean, of Pat gets much. scared all the time, doesn't he, on those planes? 
I just think he respects flying. Oh, you yeah. I, mean, I respect flying, fly, too. Jimmy Graham? I wish I could. I, I do want to go up with Jimmy and his big old helicopter. Jimmy does the old aerobatics, too, where he do the flips and rolls really? and all the little plane. He shows me the video. He took John Vilma up. He's like, oh, you'll be fine. I said, bro, I went up twice with the Thunderbirds and the Blue Angels, and I puked the whole time. He's like, oh, good. I'll take care of you, man. I'm like, no, I'll throw up the whole time in your little plane. I don't want to do it. I see him flying B-52s all the time. He might be going on a bombing run for the U.S. military <laughs> before you, you know. Maybe Jimmy's in the CIA. He could be. Uh-oh. We better watch out. I better send him a text. All right. <laughs> Matthew in Columbus. You've been online for a while. Hopefully we can get to you if this clicker works for me. What do you guys think? Matthew, Columbus, Ohio. What's up, bud? Nothing much, boys. It's Friday. Nice to see Mr. AJ Hawk in that nice suit. Hopefully yep. that suit's doing well in that hot, heated room. I don't know if it's still hot in there or not. It is. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, you should got some air flowing in there. Uh, my question is right. today, since we're getting close to college football, what are your thoughts on the Washington Huskies and the Pac-12? Here we go, AJ. Uh, Let's break what down. we've been waiting Let's for. We had this at the top of the sheet. We haven't yeah, got to it yet. Yeah, Pac-12. Is That's right. Come Washington back here for Huskies. Our Chris Simi, Peterson and the boys are going to... Washington Huskies. There it is right there. Yeah. Tell Can't you believe it took us this long. A little secret. <laughs> when I was <laughs> with the Atlanta Falcons for a month, we practiced at the Washington Huskies Stadium. We got to work out in their weight room. Oh, nice. Everything. Great place. Very hospitable. They're going to do good this year, I think. Okay. They very, a, very good. Yeah, they got a lot of players returning. I did I did a lot of uh, the Pac-12 after dark on FS1, you know, the games that kick yep. off at 10 p.m. Eastern. So they started at 7 back home where I was. It was the bit like oh, those. Yeah. That was like the primetime games, games back home. Yeah. Oregon I did multiple Ducks. games like that with Danny Cannell a lot for FS1, uh, I don't know, three, four years ago. It was fun, man. It was a fun atmosphere. It was cool. Pac-12, let's figure it out, right? Calling a lot of Oregon State, Washington State games. I think you may be correct. <laughs> I think that's what I was doing Yeah, a lot of times. Are you calling any games this year? Uh, I do not believe so because I, I know we might be doing some stuff here, traveling a little bit, doing some live stuff, figuring out how to meet it up. So I, I had to make that decision. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be helping coach some stuff with my kids. So coach Hawk. Um, I, don't, uh, I can't uh, be What are you nice. coaching? I'm, I'm going to be an assistant coach for his first time in tackle football this year. Oh, at what age? He is eight, being third grade. Let's go. Which I was informed that they people claim that they had tackle football in first grade, where I'm at. And I don't know if I believe that. I don't think so. I started in third, third grade. Fourth, fifth, I think I started tackle in third. We had, it, we had it in first. Did you really? I did not play it, but yeah. Did your dad it. coach? No, we did, I didn't start until I was in junior high. AJ, you always ask me yes. questions. Yes. Uh, why are you not the head coach of this team? Uh, well, man, that's a good question, man. I appreciate you chiming in, but uh, <laughs> I am not a good coach. <laughs> I don't have a lot of passion for coaching, and I'm terrible at it, but my son wants me to help out, and the head coach is my buddy who I played with in college, and he asked me to help out. So I said, yeah, of course, man. I'll come rally him up and give guys high fives. That's about all I'm good for. Are you doing a line or – We'll see. Running back. We'll see when we get there. Secondary? I think they're giving out helmets and shoulder pads here in a couple of weeks. That's the worst part. Yeah. He well, might not come back after that day. Oh, my son, he's eight. I'm trying to think of him, how heavy a helmet's going to feel on that dude. Wait till you have to show him how to put a girdle on and stuff like that. <laughs> Should he wear a cup, you think? No. Did so you? I, okay. No, never. So I wore a cup in high school when I was playing. I had big old the Duke that reached all the way back there. Yep. <laughs> and so I used to wear the Duke. And then my brother's two years older than me, so he played quarterback. I was running back and linebacker. We played together for two years. Then he went off to college and played. And I remember the first, one of the first things that came in, nobody wears a cup here. I said, are you serious? No one's wearing a cup? He's like, yeah, and I don't, and it feels great. And so I stopped wearing a cup then my last couple of years of high school and realized this is amazing. I should have been like this all the time. But going back to Tahoe, I played golf with Greg Maddox and Derek Lowe on Saturday. And I said, is a catcher the only one wearing a cup in, in Major League Baseball? And they said, Hell no. Everybody wears a cup. Oh, right? yeah. Every single the, – they said everyone wears a cup all the time, and I was shocked. I didn't think that was the case. I mean, I would imagine pitchers, like, y you almost have to. I mean, if you get hit – Oh, they said – they mentioned it a few times where they took a they took yeah. a shot off the cup or right off their inner leg that they scared them to death, and they said, there's no way I'm not wearing one. Yeah, I mean, they'd have to, you know, remove their penis if they got hit <laughs> with a liner, you know, without a cup on. Like, you, I, you I have imagine to do? you'd have do to. Do people have to get their penis amputated? Yeah, they yes. slice the it remnants, off. The remnants, yeah. It's a good sports show. Here. Slice it yeah, off. Really? Like hot butter. I yep. never Maybe wore we get a doctor to call in in the last 40 minutes. You never wore one, Gump? Is no. that a Canadian thing? Or are you guys I just, just tougher? They're so uncomfortable. I just said, fuck it. So did you ever get hit? Nah. 
No. Soccer, I got it bad a few times. Soccer players don't wear cups, do they? I don't yeah. think so. There's no way. They do, all you do is run. I feel it could be too uncomfortable. But you get one. You get one in soccer. That is tough. Could you head the ball? Me? Yeah, like, I mean, were you, you allowed to? Have you seen that dome of his? Yeah, he can I mean, head yeah, the ball. were you allowed to? <laughs> I know you, you physically can, but were you allowed to when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. I always say this because my daughter yeah, plays soccer, brand. and they're yeah, not allowed to hit the ball. It. Yeah. And I, you know what? I played in the um, – we had a parents versus kids game. I think I, got, I told you about it. I think I scored 16 or 18 goals in mm-hmm. that game. No big deal. But I headed one ball, and it was a rainy, overcast oh, yeah. day. I headed the ball, and I was like, oh, I think – that's the quote. If I got concussions, I would have got one there. The ball felt so heavy. So I said, <laughs> that is a good rule, right? That is a good rule that those kids can't head the ball. I think maybe in high school they let them head it, right? I mean, we did it our whole lives coming up. I don't Obviously. know. Yeah, yeah, 100%. How do you think it affected you? I mean, what did it change? between that and the paint fumes, we're doing all right. <laughs> How old are you, Gump? 35. You look good, man. You look like you're 30. Hey, were the first 14 goals not enough that you had to start going up for headers in the box? <laughs> well, you know what? There's, I had a couple of the dads, a couple of the dads with me. They saw that we really had a good connection. They're like, hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be way over there. I'm going to lure everybody away. You kind of trickle in through the back, and I'm going to hit a big old one that you just had. And so I'm like, yeah, man, this is going to be great. You guys are running set pieces. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. We, the, the girls were only 9, 10 years old, so we were running circles around them. And he hits a sky ball for me because he played soccer. He had like real soccer shoes, cleats on and everything. I didn't even wear cleats. And <laughs> I saw this ball from 25 yards away, and I headed it. And instantly, I obviously didn't go anywhere near the goal. Went Who knows where it went. And I instantly said, well, I'm glad they don't let these little kids head the ball because that sucks. And my head is really hard. So it's a, it's a good rule. But I want to jump back Hold out on. to the five-hour energy One digs. Thing, what do you got? You get to your, before you start your coaching career. Uh-oh. Make sure you watch Little Giants and you base your coaching off of Ed O'Neill. You think? From Little Giants. Well, yeah, that's where you got to rub Icebox. I got to rub Icebox's hamstrings down with warm goat's milk every night. No, Icebox that- was not the one. Um, it was Spike who was getting his hamstrings. Spike. Yeah. yeah. Icebox was Rick Moranis' dog. Yes, yes. correct. She was a stud. Spike was carrying refrigerators we'll around. Down your throat. What's that? You kick off, we'll ram it down your throat. Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> Rick Moranis, sorry to hear. He popped up in the news like a year ago. He got sucker punched. He did. Remember yeah, that? Big time. By Icebox, actually. Oh, no. I didn't know that yeah. connection. Hey, RIP to both of them. Hopefully, they're both doing great right now. Hey, here we go. <laughs> Let's go to Jeff in New York. Jeff, you know what, Gumpy? This guy has a question for you. So, Jeff, what's on your mom, Paul? Hey, Gump, I just had a question. How bad would it look for Concafa if Qatar goes ahead and wins the gold cup on United States soil, knowing that Mexico has their A team there, as as Paul has alluded to, our D minus team is there. Uh, U.S. actually, the bunch of young studs played well last night. Uh, Qatar tied Panama. I wouldn't worry about uh, Qatar winning this tournament. AJ, here's the situation. Qatar in the Middle East. The CONCACAFA is... Yeah, you know, how does that work? So if you're if you're hosting the World Cup, you're eligible to enter random tournaments for whatever reason. They thought they would bring their noise over to the CONCACAFA. Yeah. And guess what? Ain't happening. So they're getting blasted, you're saying? No. They tied Panama the other Wait, night. Wait, Qatar, though, there's some, like... And there's some issues going on over there about the World Cup being in that area. There's, there's yeah, a lot of people dying. Seventy-five thousand people buried underneath the new stadium that just went up. That they built the like nets it. out of the people's uh, phibias. They just stacked them on top of each other to make the goalposts. I mean, that maybe it's stronger, but I don't think it's. You know, that seems kind of rude or kind of mean. Well, I don't exactly Wait, so, know what their governmental situation. But who, like who okayed there, but, it? Who okayed the World Cup to be there? Which I know there's all kinds yeah, of corruption. So that was the Seth last Blatter. thing. Uh, FIFA is the one that caught a bunch of heat. Right. That was because, the last thing Seth Blatter did before everyone realized that he was actually the biggest scumbag going. So it's still staying in Qatar, though, right? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but it's in December. It's usually in the summer. And the U.S. is going or no? Uh, yeah. Qualifications just starting now. So what do they have to do to get there? Just qualify, dude. How do you qualify, dude? You just got to come like top two in your group, I believe. Is Landon Donovan the head coach? Unfortunately, Unfortunately no, he's not. So who are the big names for the U.S.? Because I know I'm a very casual soccer fan, but I remember Landon Donovan. Mm-hmm. I remember the redhead. Lexi Lawless. Lexi Lawless. I remember Tony Mioli. Yep. yep. Casey Keller. Yep. Yeah, that was t- 30 Twellerman. years ago. Yep. Taylor Twellerman. Twellerman. Welcome to the modern world. But I'm world, saying these guys AJ. were like these guys were household names at the time, though. Or, or is is Kobe Pulisic Jones. the only one right now? Pulisic. Kobe Jones. Um, Reyna, who plays for Borussia Dortmund, is very good. Obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the old coach's. Freddie Adu was a household name. Yeah, he's still playing. He is. What? Yeah. 
on Team USA. Well, he's probably like 22 years old now. The guy stepped on the scene, he was six. <laughs> yeah, or right? he's in some senior league because he was 35 when they said he was 18. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> uh, it was a Danny Almonte situation. <laughs> the the uh, Little League World Series, right? I'm going to get to one more call here quick. Here we go. So, Jimmy the Rat. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Jimmy oh, no. the Rat. Let me dial you up here. Jimmy, buddy, you have something for Diggs. I hope it's nice. Please go ahead. Oh, absolutely. Hi, boys. And, and AJ, you're doing a great job and look dapper as always. Thank you. Uh, Digger, good luck tomorrow in the softball game. Oh, Digger. Yeah. And, Digger. And we'll be looking for you. Thank you. And cheering for you. Thank you, and too. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll yell hammer down hey. when, we, when uh, hopefully you'll see us. Hell yeah. Are and you going, Jimmy the Rat? Are you going to go? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh. Jimmy, can you wear... Can you wear like some bright yellow shirt or something so Diggs can can figure it out it's you in Maybe the crowd? Maybe paint Jimmy, just Diggs you? on your face. Well, yes, we want to try to get a picture of, of Diggs to put in our key bar, our garage bar, yes. so that we can we sit in the bar some in the garage bar and turn on hammer down and have a few pops and yeah. see what the oh, see yeah. what the boys are doing at four at five o'clock in the afternoon. Man, so absolutely, I want to get a picture of the big guy. I love Jimmy. Diggs has promised to stick around after the game, Jimmy. He will be signing autographs yes. in the parking lot. Uh, five, he, only five bucks for a pick. If you want, he'll go oh, back to your garage bar and have a few with you with the pitcher. Yeah. Still, I, looking forward to seeing you all. And, uh, Diggy, we can't wait to see you. Thank Diggs, you, Jimmy. hey, Jimmy, appreciate it. Stay That's on the guy. line. Hey, baby, Jimmy. Hey, we'll make sure. Jimmy. Let's have Mitt give you all of Diggs' info, his number, his address, everything, so you guys can hang in the garage. Maybe Diggs will even build his own garage bar. What do you think, Diggs? Yeah, I think it's a really good idea. Something do you really? I aspire to. Well, guys, I don't know if you know this, but we've already had two and a half hours of this show going yeah. so far. We only have about 30 minutes left. Well, maybe we'll do a little bit of overtime. Ooh. Hammer Down's coming today, right? Yes, uh-huh. sir. Yeah, full, full baseball slate. We're back, baby. We're back. Yeah. Who is uh? Who's old buddy playing? Are they playing tonight? Yeah, KC. He's playing KC. He's probably going to the park right after our interview. Then yeah, Mancini, probably. right? Probably hit a day. Baseball's a weird life. It's you the just best. travel. I mean, it's awesome to make the majors, but just traveling, new hotels. You go to the park like seven hours before the game, and you have 162 games. It's a grind. I give those guys a lot of credit. We'll yeah, talk they, about that. A lot of other stuff. Tables though. in a clubhouse. Ping pong. Do they have the pool table anywhere? Probably. Those are easy to move, so yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this. 231, Friday, July 16th. Pat McAfee Show. See you in a little bit. Well, hello, sensual piano keys. You sound incredibly inspirational and motivational. Big announcement. Coming from our company. You know, throughout my entire life, I've made decisions that people have said, ooh, that is stupid. You've read about them. You heard about them. When I was in high school, I went to an underground poker game, won 1400 bucks, flew myself down to Miami, won a kicking contest, and got a scholarship to West Virginia the next day. I turned my back on soccer that day. Everybody said, you're an idiot. Why are you doing that? You have more schools looking at you for soccer than you do for football. What are you thinking? Fast forward eight years with the Indianapolis Colts, and I was on top of the world, top of the mountain. How's the view? Not too shabby. And when I was at the top of my game, I decided, you know what? I'm going to pursue some other stuff. My friends and I are going to go to work on the internet. We're going to try to chase fulfillment as opposed to just a paycheck. And there were some interesting responses from people of power in the sporting world. Make Make them tear the uniform off of you. Look, somebody needs to stage an intervention. People who know this guy, get to him now. Make him put his helmet back on and get to camp. Oh, no, there's no intervention, Wilbon. No, no, no. Here we are three years after that date, and it's a celebration, bitches. Cut the music. Let's hand out some bags to the boys. For the boys. For the boys. By the way, that's you, brother. Oh my god. Are you home? Alright, come out the front door. What's up, dude? <laughs> what is this? What's this? Oh, uh, you son of a bitch. What the fuck? Fuck you. Oh, yeah. that is the bag of money. Oh, uh, fans ordeal went through. That's $50,000 in there for 
Here's a backpack with uh, fifty thousand dollars in it. Oh, fifty thousand. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars in there. Yes, yeah, so there's fifty thousand dollars. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Let's go. Drop it back. <laughs> oh man. Let's, Let's, Let's go, dude. Start. Let's go. I appreciate you, buddy. Yo, this is. Appreciate you, dude. We did it. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, it's a fuck ton of money. <laughs> you guys. <right? laughs> when I asked Dan Patrick for some advice, he told me always take care of the boys. Well, and you should know those people that are there with you that their value cannot be overstated and should not be overstated. So Mike Wilbon, they didn't hold my jersey on me. They didn't hold my helmet on me. We didn't have an intervention. What we have is a celebration because when you bet on yourself, sometimes you hit for big. And for us, the only place we'll bet for the next couple years in an exclusive deal, FanDuel backed the Brinks truck up to our office and we have never been more thankful, more excited, and more together as we promote the greatest sports book on planet Earth. Here we go. We're going to wrap up this third hour here of the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat today, Friday, July 16th. We've had a great show so far. Had some fun talking about all different types of stuff going on out there in the sports world. The Open is happening right now. DeChambeau had some issues with his driver. He apologized, all this stuff. Then Brooks Kepka took a shot at him in his interview. I don't know if you guys saw that. You see what Brooks did? Brooks mm-hmm. just keeps chipping away at Bryson. How upset do you think Bryson is? They were, yeah, they were talking. They were interviewing Brooks after his round, and he – I can't. I don't, know, I don't know what the question was or whatever, but he did say, I loved my driver today. So just another shot at Bryson. So I saw something where Brooks – talked about Bryson being fair game because he said he went back on his word. Do you know what that word was? Did they agree to not mention each other publicly to the media or what? I have no idea. Yeah, I believe uh, they did. Like They met each other on the uh, putting green a while ago after they had both said something – after uh, Brooks said something about him playing slow, and then they both you know agreed that, like, yeah, we don't like each other, but that's the end of it. And then – I believe Bryson on his Twitch stream said something about Brooks being in the body issue at the oh. time, and that kind of he was like, "All right, you're fair game now." Then if Bryson's if, on Twitch, what does he play? What I game? believe he was. I don't know if he still does Mind it, sweeper. but <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. Plays the game. a lot of Minesweeper on Twitch, though. So yeah, I'm so. surprised that Bryson even is on Twitch playing video games. I figured like that dude is just all golf all the time. Well, I don't think he does it anymore. But I mean, at the time. You know, he was definitely. People never big seem time. to like when people are live on Twitch. They don't seem to ever say anything that really hurts their career, do they? It no, never happens, no. right? No. Who was the other? Who are the other people? That had uh, some <laughs> <laughs> it seems like. It, well, it's true though. You put a mic, a live mic that's out going live out there to somebody. People are gonna make mistakes. Trust me, I have nightmares every once in a while of <laughs> making mistakes, and nothing that would like. I don't say things off mic that I don't say on the mic really. But like, what if? Yeah, what if something happened? Like. What if I had a stroke? What if I fell asleep again like I did before? Yeah, I just, with just blurted out something terrible. So, hey, it's a good no, thing. Luckily for you, who you are on video and what you would say into a mic is exactly what you would say off the mic. That's, I mean, that's a good – thank you very much. You're I don't welcome. know if you meant that as a compliment, <laughs> but I take it as one that I'm not playing a character. Like, I say that about to my wife like all the time. I said, hey, trust me. I say crazier stuff around my wife than I do with my buddies because I don't want to be like – Oh, hey, I'm this buttoned up little turd when she's not around <laughs> or when, when she's yeah. around and then all of a sudden she's not there and like, hey, what, what is this? We're two different people. Like, so I, I, I think I go over the top the other way when she's when I'm with her just because like, I don't, there's no reason you don't have to separate. Hopefully you find somebody, a spouse, whoever you are, that they let you be you. Ty, I know you just got married. Mm-hmm. Cobra Cowboy is married. But it's like every once in a while they will look at you and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they should. They should. Like, they should sit there and be like, hey, like, 
I'm not going to tell you what to say. I'm not going to censor you, but you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Need everybody every everybody needs while. someone to hold them a little bit accountable. Because then, guess what? Once we calm down, once we realize, you're like, yeah, they're probably right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably, probably right, you know? Hey, what about this five-hour energy phone line? Uh, let's check it out. We've had some good callers, and a lot of people want to talk about Diggs What's in the that? old softball game. Where he's <laughs> All gonna right. Hit three to digger. four dongers tomorrow night. Cannot uh, wait. Hang up on those guys. Oh, here we go. Adam. Don't know where you are, but Adam, what's happening, big guy? Uh, hey, AJ, just wanted to say shout-out to you and the boys. It's been a great show today. Um, uh, my question is going to be for you, AJ. Uh, I'm a big Cowboys fan. I'm super excited to see them on Hard Knocks this season. Um, and you talk nothing but highly about Mike McCarthy, so I just want to see what are you what are you most excited to see out of him. And uh... Well, I was surprised that the Cowboys got on Hard Knocks. Obviously, Jerry Jones, I'm sure, was pushing for this. But I am super juiced to watch Mike McCarthy – Especially early on, I want to see if you contrast his interviews, like his sit down, they're almost like confessionals, like you're on the real world. I want to see from like the first day of those until day 20, maybe, see how much, I guess, comfortable he gets and how open and honest he is. Because I think he will be. He's, he gives great answers when he does speak with the media, but I think he is solely focused on winning football games and finding a way to get it turned around in Dallas. So I don't know if he's going to have a ton of patience for it, but I think it's going to going to make for some great, great TV. I think Zeke is a great character. Mm -hmm. They will obviously follow Dak. And there will always be a few people, too, that we don't really know much about that they'll try to spotlight, I think, and hopefully become stars. Don't you think, though, that like that is one of the things, I mean, just from someone who didn't play or anything, uh, just a fan, you know, like the beauty of Hard Knocks is they put those cameras up in those rooms, and I think guys genuinely do forget that they're there. Especially, like, think about football. Like, think about you're coming off the practice field. You had a three-hour practice. All you're worried about is like, oh, man, I know in the fourth rep I did the wrong thing. I missed the tackle. I got blown up. I got blasted. You're thinking about that. So once you get in there and you realize, like, it is true. I guess people that do reality shows tell you that. They say, believe it or not, like, you kind of forget the cameras are there, which there's no way you truly forget. It's like I'm I'm sitting here doing a show with you. I don't ever forget that there's cameras and mics around. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm sitting in my attic doing the show, I always know I'm on camera. So, like, and you should always assume you're on camera. But I guess you get, just get more and more comfortable with it, and you don't worry about it. That's well, when it's staring you in the face, though, right? These ones, yeah. like, you you see those coaches' meetings? Like, they'll shoot yeah. it way over the shoulder. It's in the corner of the room. None of those guys are really mic'd up. It's just mics that they have in there already. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I, can, I, I 100% am sure. I, I would be confident that I would get done at some points. I'd be like, oh, man, this, we got cameras and mics in here. Mm-hmm. Like, where I would realize a little bit later, be like, ah, not sure if they'll cut that out or not. But... Imagine the editing process. Foxy, you know, you edit th- those uh, the vlogs, vlogs you put up. We have them coming out today, by the way, around 3.15-ish Ooh, right after the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, can you imagine the editing process? They have to have hours and hours and hours of oh, footage yeah. to cut down. What do they make? One episode, like, 45 minutes, 48 minutes, yeah, maybe? Yeah, about an hour long. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so much stuff. They just have so many cameras, which means they're gathering so much stuff. I just don't know how they would do that. They must have a huge team. But it's they're one of the best in the world at it, you know? That show's incredible. Who does the voiceover wise. again? That's a huge part. Oh. Liv Schreiber. Liv Schreiber. Yeah. Liv Schreiber's still there, right? Yeah. Still doing oh, yeah. Because he was doing uh, 24-7 on HBO, and then Mayweather went to Showtime, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then when you watch their version of 24-7, it's not as good because you don't have Schreiber's voice. Right, and he almost did go because, you know, Ray Donovan was on it at Showtime, so oh, they were right. trying to, you know. Is that show him. still happening? No. I don't think so. You sure? It was a good show out, right? Yeah, it went for like six seasons. People loved it. That's oh, yeah. awesome. Here's a question for John Voight. Uh-oh. Do there, is there fixers? Angelina Jolie, right? Yeah. It's her dad? Yeah. Is there fixers in the NFL? Fixers as in how? So, like, his character on Showtime in Ray Donovan, like, stars in L.A. would call him, like, if they – needed like a sex tape to stay off the internet and stuff like like the, a fixer. I'm sure there are. I don't know in the NFL if there are. Each team I'm guessing has some kind of fixer. I would imagine. See, I was in Green Bay so we didn't have an owner. I would imagine owners have fixers. Yeah, I think they did. Like if I was an owner, I would start thinking back to my childhood of some people that are very loyal. Uh-huh. <laughs> They'll do anything for the cause and I would put them on staff. Not to do anything illegal, but maybe help people navigate through some issues you may have. But, yeah, I'm sure there are. But it's harder and harder, don't you think, now to get away with it? To get away with anything? With the Internet? Everybody's got a camera. Everyone's got a phone. Still can't find the aliens on their phones, though. True. But I just think it's too hard to get away with stuff right now. Yeah, I agree. But if you're good enough. To- I feel like if you've got enough money, you can make anything so go like, away. If you, so you're thinking, Diggs, if there's a sex tape out there that someone doesn't want out, there's fixers that can shut those things down? Yeah. 
I mean, Hulk Hogan be, couldn't figure it out. Whether it be with money or pressure. Or that one, that's a weird situation sure. there, by yeah. the way, all the way around. I, I read that I book. don't even know if we're allowed to talk about that because you'll get sued. Hey, change, I mean, I'm not talking about it. I wasn't talking about it. An alleged incident that happened that he went to court and had the backing of a billionaire. And there was nothing alleged about it. We saw it. The weird thing is, it was the guy's <laughs> wife. Right? Yeah. Bubba, Bubba loves He set him up. Mm-hmm. Why did he set him up with his own wife? Is that, that just what they were into? Maybe it was blackmail. He wanted the restaurant, brother. That's why he did it. Is that what happened? <laughs> nah, I don't know. Is that what happened? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go to Jeremy, it's spelled, in Florida. Jeremy, what's on your mom, pal? <laughs> One second, Jeremy. Here we go. There you are, Jeremy. What's he, up? He, he put Jeremy? J-E-R-M-E-Y. Cool name, bud. Tell your oh, mom good job. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Man. My name is Jeremy from Florida. <laughs> we get it. We get it. Thanks for everybody. All right. Well, anyways, AJ, first thing, please don't let your kid wear a cup unless you want to become the laughing stock of the locker room. I learned that at a very young age, unfortunately. Really? Uh, the Huevos took a beating because of that. But, yeah, you walk in the locker room, you wear a cup on the first day of practice, and everyone looks at you and laughs. So just well, a little pointer there. Until you get hit in the balls. Um, <laughs> True. Yeah, it hurts, but you know what? You live and you learn. Okay. You grow up to be a better man. Make sure he wears the cup where it's just a strap and cheeks are out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about the whole Jalen situation thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I feel like the national media always is on Jalen's side. But, you know, being a Jags fan down here, it was very well documented. He clashed with management. He had that fight with Marone on the sideline. I mean, yes, he's great, but it's always about money. He quit on his team, his teammates, everything like that. You guys always said that you can be – you can afford to be, but at what point does that become, you know, something that the locker room doesn't approve of? At what point do you get sick of that? Well, it, it and that's a good question. It depends on his production. If you're still producing, you can get away with a lot. I mean, Pat says all the time, yeah, be who you can afford to be, but at some point in your career, your production may go down a little bit, and if you are still... I don't know. Like, I don't. What has Jalen done over the years? I know he went out of Jacksonville and it worked. He got out of there. Now he's in a much better situation. He got a giant contract. Now the team he is on has a lot of stars. They have a great head coach. They have Matthew Stafford. So it all worked out. So you can't say he was wrong for that, I guess. Um, but I feel like with every star, there's like a point where they know they naturally like mature and grow up too, and they realize that you can't do some of the things you may have done and said when you were younger. Don't you think? I mean, yeah, probably. But I, I mean. Would you? Uh, I guess T.O. never, T.O. That's never was, stopped. That, that's what I was going to say. I mean, T.O. just kept getting the same. He was always pretty productive, though, too. He was. He was. And he'd quietly have, you know, even when people said he was washed, he'd go out there and have like 800 yards and, he's and still trying seven to play. touchdowns. He's still yeah. running 40s against people, right? At 50 mm-hmm. years old, and he looks like he did when he played. Yeah. He looks amazing. So I think it also depends on the position. People kind of expect it. If you're a lockdown corner, if that's what you do, something that not many people on the planet can do, if you can do that, yeah, man, you can get away with a lot. But Jalen seems to be like when you talk to guys that play with him too, he seems to be a good teammate. The guys love to go to battle for, him. and they, when you're that good and you can shut down the other team's best receiver, you can get away with a lot. Mm-hmm. And for I don't sure. think he's doing it from everything. At least on the outside looking in, I think he's fine. I think he's doing whatever he should be doing. And you have to have a delusional amount of confidence to play that position. Just think about it, man. You get beat deep once, you can lock a guy down for 60 straight plays. You give up a touchdown last play of the game, that's all they think about. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, I had 59 awesome plays. Yeah. So you need to have that delusional level of confidence. And I think all the great corners do, all the great receivers do, all that stuff when you're put on an island like that. I like Jalen. I don't know how you guys feel. Charles about didn't talk. Woodson didn't talk a lot, right? No. Charles did not. No, he was so confident and so not quiet. Like during the games, he was one of those guys that when Charles talked, you absolutely listened. Um, but you I'd pepper Charles with questions about things here and there. And he's got no one to stop. <laughs> like he's got to know when, when enough is enough. And he wants to just take a nap on the bus or something or in the huddle. Uh, but, yeah, he was an awesome guy. Awesome. Talk about your ego, man. Like, I remember asking him. He was, a, you know, he's corner for however many years. And then he, he like kind of slowly transitioned, played a little safety, nickelback, all that. He didn't care. I remember asking him, like, was that, was that hard for you to, to say, like, People to think, oh, I'm not a lockdown corner. He's like, no, I don't. I just want to play ball. I just want to play football. I want to win games. I don't care where it's at, what position I'm playing, what my label is. I'm like, I give you credit because you're one of the best to ever do it, and you have that. Some young guys probably need to have that same mindset. That was big, you too, because didn't you? You didn't. You wouldn't talk to him for the first like three months because he went to Michigan, right? And you just <laughs> people love to say that. 
people do. And even Charles. But like, yeah, we're, we're supposed to have a bet this week. I could be Michigan Ohio State <laughs> week. We're supposed to bet on something. And I'm like, yeah, man, let's do it. He's like, no, nah, hell no, man. You guys beat us the last 12 years. <laughs> like, yeah, when we were there, Charles, it was a little closer battle than it I has been. General Bob in the locker room in the NFL was huge on making bets for <laughs> Ohio State versus Michigan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Jake Bauer. So if you guys remember Jake Bauer, tight end for the Giants, broke his leg in the Super yeah. Bowl, tried mm-hmm. to run on it and snapped it even more. Yeah. His knee is shot because of Jake's an awesome guy. Jake was in New England after that. And who was it? The now the year that so they after they won the Super Bowl, after the, the um Giants and Eli beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. The next year, General Bobby Carpenter was on the Patriots that offseason, and so was Jake Ballard. And Jake tells a story that <laughs> so they got they gave him, I guess, what their AFC championship rings, which I didn't know you get those. And they gave him AFC championship rings. And Bobby was sitting there while they're all walking back in the locker room. And Jake said, Bobby goes, hey, Jake, why don't you show him what the real one looks like? Because Jake won the Super Bowl with the Giants right before that, too. And he was saying it around Tom and everybody. And Jake was like, man, I just got here, Bob. Please be quiet. <laughs> Please don't bring any extra attention to me. Like he said, Bobby didn't care. I was like, that's awesome, man. Good for you, Bob. That's Bobby. He's like, general Bob. Yeah, he's the, he's the general, you know. I'm gonna get, maybe This may be the last call of the day here. And it should, this, this will be a good one. So... The five-hour energy phone line. Let's go to Danny in Colorado. Danny's got a he's got a buddy that was fighting through some adversity. So let's see oh. what's going on, Dan. If I can get you on here, one of you guys open. There Mr. we go, Hawk? Danny. What's up, buddy? In Colorado, what's happening, hey, man? Mr. Hawk, how you doing? Oh, hey, beautiful. Everyone's doing well today. Uh, just gonna be super quick here. Um, I have two things. First question is gonna be um, AJ. When are we gonna see you sing with everybody? Okay. Okay. And now I'll get to my story. Okay. Okay. You need to wear a cup if you're a goalie in lacrosse. I had a buddy, he got hit in the balls, okay, and all of the blood in his balls went away, and they had to remove his left testy. And the rest of his life in high school, he got called one nut. So, mm. it one clock. Well, I mean, doesn't that happen too, though, if a guy's wearing a cup and he has a ball get pinched in between the cup oh, and yeah. his body? That's uh, That's... Well, Ty said, I mean, losing your left ball is a lot better than losing your shaft. Ty acted like you have to you have to amputate your penis well, if you sounds, get hit. Right? Well, I mean, some people say that it's easier just to cut the whole piece <laughs> off, just the, the kit and caboodle. But, I mean, that doesn't sound terrible. You know, I mean, all the blood leaves and then your nuts are just like flat Stanley. You just take a regular, you know. <laughs> More blood I mean, at least you have a thing, body. right? Everybody needs a thing. Like, oh, that's the guy with one ball because it got hit. Like, well, not like a terrible nickname, too, by the way. Yeah, but do you is want it, just could have came uh, up with a bunch of other... You can get a fake back. one, though. They put prosthetic balls Call in. Like oh, yeah. Uno or something like that. Uno. Very creative digs. Thank you. Go on. <laughs> Does yeah. Lance have a prosthetic? Mm, we should ask him. Can we get him on the show on Monday? Maybe. Lance on show? What's he doing? Is he still running? Or I think he has got the gold jersey on this weekend. Who cares? Yeah, the tour. Be quiet. What is he with? Austin, <laughs> Texas? He's probably mad but he's moving to Austin because of uh, COVID, don't you think? <laughs> so what do you... Okay. Guys, it's 251, 252 about to be. You guys have any big plans for the weekend other than watching Diggs Thank hit you. dongers all day in the celebrity softball game? Yeah, I may go to the theater and check out Fast 9. <laughs> Wait, that's coming out too? Okay, it came out a couple like weeks ago. Like a month, yeah. AJ. Nine Fast 9 Furious is out? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Who are the main characters? Cena. Is The Rock in it? The Rock is not in no. it because Wait, John, Oh, the this Rock is what John is Cena out. had to make the video when he was promoting the movie, correct? Yes. What, what video, video are you talking video? about? What video? Uh, the one he where he declared he was a communist traitor? Is that what he said? I don't even know exactly what he That's said. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. What do you apologize for? Calling <laughs> what Taiwan. Do you do? I don't know the details of it. I just know Taiwan it was an awkward video. It's the first I've heard of this. Is it really? Guys, guys come on. We should really dive We're into so it. close. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what I'm doing this weekend. I couldn't go with Pat and the boy. I have a wedding, all right? And it's very important, so I'm very excited for Who, it. Can you say who's getting married? Yeah, it's my lady's sister is getting married, so I'm Oh, there. congrats. Are you yeah. in it? No, I'm not. She Are you is, upset? obviously. So no. she's in it. Are you, what do you I'm do not between... Not that important. Not what do you do between the... The like ceremony and the reception. Up, yeah, well, no, they go when you're not. In, it's it's weird if you're both not in it because now she'll probably be in the limo with the bridal party getting hammered. Yeah. What do you do? Sit by yourself and yeah, drink? Just a lot of shaking hands and hanging out with parents at the cocktail hour. Prior, yeah. just hey, we're just waiting on them to get done. The old ball and chain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. That's what I'm doing. As they get out of the limo with four beer bongs and they're just stumbling out. You're like, oh man, that would have been fun to hang out with them. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on. You've what been you there before, before, haven't you? What do I wear? Uh-huh. Am I in the wedding? No. 
If I'm not in it, I mean, I'd probably wear something like this. Okay. Most likely. Foxy. Maybe to, not a tie, though. Foxy was going to go to Ty's wedding in a t-shirt and dress pants. Wow, that's just not With true. a jacket? I didn't, no, not I a didn't, jacket. I didn't wear a sport jacket, too. These guys were giving wedding. me a hard time because I didn't want to wear a sport coat because I think it looks better when you don't wear a sport coat, also more comfortable. But they convinced me to wear the sport coat. That's probably a good idea. I mean, I, with any wedding, you just don't want to piss off the bride. Yes, right? spot on. Like, you don't want the bride to be like, well, well, yeah, it was good. And then your hillbilly friend showed up with her suspenders and <laughs> tank tops on. Like, that's yeah. the main thing, right? Yes, exactly. Just make sure it's okay for her and the groom. And, and this was an good. East Coast wedding, so we thought it was going to be very, very nice, which it was. So I was like, all right, I better play it safe. I put the coat on. Okay, Ty, who, gave your, who was your best man? My little brother. How did he do in his speech? Pretty good. He doesn't really like talking in front of people. He's a teacher, he just but he doesn't, you know. take digs at you the whole time, or how does it work? Uh, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Not really, you know. I mean, the 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 best formula is to like say it's your brother, just kill your brother, kill the groom the whole time, and just pump up the bride. That's what you have to do. Yeah, just don't make any jokes about the bride, or don't make any jokes about hey, all you guys are unlucky now. She's locked up, so come turn in your her house keys to me. Like I've heard people <laughs> talk about that. Yeah, good joke. Make your uh, make the bride feel like a real skank here on her wedding night. I was the best. It's man never at, a good joke. By I was way. the best man at his wedding, and the like DJ announced me, and this guy had a pretty inflated sense, so I kind of just killed the DJ. You know, got, you got really? a, oh yeah, I got a good pop out of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any interaction with the DJ after this? No, definitely not. Or before that, but, you know, hey, guy needed to be knocked down a peg or two, so I did it. We all need to be held accountable, Ty. That's right. We talked about that earlier in the show. And as this show comes to an end, I appreciate my time here, guys. Thanks for having me in the studio. Thank Thanks you, for, for Thank you, AJ. Here. Thank you, AJ. Feels good to dress up. I, it lasted the whole time. I thought I was going to take my jacket off about 30 <laughs> seconds in. But you know what? Pat will be back on Monday, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. He'll be back in town. I know he's got Friday Night Smackdown. He has pay-per-view on Sunday. He will be back here. Who knows how tired and loopy he will be, but you know that will make for a good show. So we're going to have a great show on Monday. I will be back in my attic in Columbus, Ohio. It will be fun. We have plenty of stuff. I know some stuff's going to happen over this weekend. But until then, this has been the Pat McBee Show. I am AJ Hawk sitting in. Next show, Mad Dog. How <laughs> amazing. Thanks. Nailed it. Nailed it. Is Mad Dog on? I think so. I didn't mention Mad Dog enough, probably, right? What do you mean? We got one bark in. Two barks. Is this a, is this an overtime graphic play? Oh, I didn't play it because I was counting you down. That's so on me. Oh. Way to be on top of things, though. Bam. Well, I, I think it's a very good graphic. Yeah. Very, uh... Play the hit. You guys did a good job. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Look at like the crowd. Where do you get that random crowd noise? Like, the talking. Probably just on, like, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> all the little stuff. All the details I'm curious about. All right. Hey, welcome to After Hours. I think we call it. Cameras. Who knows what camera I'm looking at, man. <laughs> You guys are really trying to play a game with me. We, I'm going to get some red lights to put on these cameras so I know which one. Not that one, right? Nope. nope. This one? Yep. Oh, boom. Right by COVID Cowboy. Mm -hmm. Bingo. So, let's be honest, though. What do we think Diggs does this weekend <laughs> at the game? Piece of shit. <laughs> what do we think? Okay, so let's say he gets four at bats. He said he's batting in the five hole. You're five piece? Ooh. They know. How do you know that? I got sources. Is you there guys, a, who's your manager? Cam Hayward. Oh, he's the manager. Yeah. So have you been in contact with him? Uh, I've been in contact with his people. How did you get added to this game? <laughs> I was invited. Who reached out to you? <laughs> um, Jim the, Leland. The wild. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Leland. Yeah. Uh, the Wild Things, the Washington Wild Things are hosting the game. Uh, and the GM, I think, of that. Where are you, Where's it being played? Uh, Washington, PA, which is like half hour south of Pittsburgh. Is it, It's a minor league park? Yeah. And they'll build like a fence, I'm sure. I assume so. Well, yeah, they have to for yeah. softball. Is there a derby? No derby. <laughs> no derby. Do you get to take BP? Nope, to BP. Why? No breakfast balls either. I why? Don't think. I don't know why. They probably don't. They probably don't have enough people out there shagging balls. Well, you guys can shag balls. They probably don't want to lose probably any right. balls. Actually, they don't want to probably. lose thirty-five balls in BP, right, to the crowd. Yeah. Hey, throw that back. You think you could do that? You think you can get people to throw it back? No. No. Softballs. No. Who, who cares about salt? You're going to be in the cages, though, like 8 a.m. tomorrow. Probably. Ready, right? You legit probably should go to an uh, underhand softball cage because that is a different thing, man. you got to sit sit back as long as you possibly can. Wait. You know who's a great player? Garth Brooks, I hear, is a great softball player. Really? You brought him up the other day. Michael Bolton, Michael Bolton was a dominant softball player really? back in the day. Yeah. Ironically, you know who's not great? Chris Gaines. He's terrible <laughs> softball. 
because he's too emotional, man. He's trying to get his feelings out. He can't do that in the baseball field. I think Chris Gaines is coming back, in case you're wondering. I've heard that. Garth, yeah, he just sold out an arena somewhere, I believe, or a stadium. Probably. I mean, that's all he does is sell out. But Chris Gaines, I'm, I'm looking forward have you to coming back. I have not met Garth, man. That's another one. I want to meet Garth. Have you, any of you guys met Garth no. Brooks? Do you yeah. know who Garth Brooks is, uh, Gump? Come on, AJ. Being from Canada? Yeah. Is he big in Canada? Yeah. He's big everywhere. Well, obviously. Who's the biggest yeah. musician right now, other than Bieber, that's Canadian? Not Robin Thicke. Drake. Celine Dion. Drake. Drake. Celine yeah. Dion. Uh, yeah. Drake's always going to be the guy, isn't he? Yeah. Top uh, dog. I heard he unfollowed Pat. No. That's what I heard. No. He got wind of, you know, no. Pat was, Pat didn't like his latest album. No. 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 He never no. said that. Don't AJ. One of, his, one of his minions, I think, reached out to me and said that, hey, man, we're about to drop off this uh, McAfee train. <laughs> how, how, did, how did they reach out to you? Uh, through, I think, a, a text. <laughs> random text. <laughs> random number. Who's the most popular musician from Ohio? Oh, I mean, there's too many to talk about. I don't know. Rascal Flats. They're, They're from, from Ohio. Ohio. Two of them are from Ohio. Holy shit. Gary, the lead singer, and Jay. They're both from Ohio, yeah. Guy Fieri, Gary. Guy Fieri. Where's Guy Fieri from? Oh, Flavor Town. Flavor, Flavor Town. Oak Town, dude. Oak Town. Kid Cuddy's from Ohio. Oh, yeah. He is? John, Bone, Bone, Thugs. Bone Thugs. John Legend's from Springfield, Ohio. They were in our league. We played them. John Legend's still a thing? 98 Degrees, yeah. Nick and Drew Lachey. His wife oh. thing. Yes. Yeah. Nick oh, Lackey, yeah. dude. Nick Lachey, he might be in the softball game. He's a big Reds fan. <laughs> it's not fucking Pittsburgh versus Cincinnati. Oh. Could be. Maybe next one will be, be That's a good idea. Maybe Should get be. Tom Brenneman to call the game. <laughs> 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 Tony, are you going to get boozed up before Can't the game? I'm going to have to have a, I'm gonna have a couple, pal. <laughs> okay. Are you? Yeah. So will they have booze? Like, they'll have beers in the dugout, I assume, right? Yeah, they said it's fully stocked bar. Oh, oh, okay. So, okay, if you hit a dinger, your first at bat. Do you not drink? No. Then, like, say you didn't, you don't have anything to drink. First at bat, home run. Then what? Okay, I got to stay with this. No, no. Take, booze will All be the pressure's out. off. Yeah. Booze will be flowing after that. Good. Good for you. So, Cam Hay, who's the captain of the other team? Uh, Doran Dickerson. Bill, oh, I thought it was Bill Cower. No. Nah. Scoring Doran. Right. <laughs> Doran double, Dickerson played, double pit, played in the NFL for a little bit. Yeah. I bet. Well, you have Najee Harris on Harris. your team, too. Yeah, Najee's Alex Highsmith, too. I bet that dude can pound the ball. Pat Fryermuth. Oh, they got Zach Banner. So I was, said Dick should be worried. There's like seven active Steelers on Team Gold here. Yeah. Man. Oh. I mean, is Dwayne Haskins going to be there? What, do you, what yeah. do you mean? Yeah, he will. He will, right? Yeah. yeah he said okay. he's got all his teeth. Good. Don't Good believe everything you hear. Oh, did he really say that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Who started that rumor then? No Probably idea. Connor. Isn't it? That's a shame. Like, it doesn't matter. The damage is done. Like, even if he didn't get a tooth knocked out. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter now. Like nope. it, the word is out there. No one reads the the rebuttal or whatever. Don't worry, we'll get the full story this weekend. Diggs is going to ask Come him on. about it. Yeah. So none of you guys are going to the game though. No, he won't let us. We're invited. <laughs> well, you can probably buy a ticket. Buy right? tickets online. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> you can buy tickets online. Yeah. How many How many friends and family comps did you get, Diggs? Five. Did you really? Wow. So who all do you have in your corner? My parents, my brother, yes. my wife. And her brother. Are they excited? My brother, going? My brother. Are they nervous? How's it work? No, they? no. They've seen me play billions of baseball. Oh, so they know it's just dongers all day this long. This is just another game for them. What position? I'm hoping to play third. Why would you want to play third? I want to fucking... catch one off the face, man. No, no, no. Hot corner. I, if, there's, if there's one thing in my athleticism that I still have confidence in, Fielding? it's my reflex time. I don't want to run. I don't want to have to do anything, but I can throw still, and I, my reflex time is still pretty good. So, Have you done anything as of late to test your reflex time, though? What makes you, think, what makes you so confident in your reflex time? Two days ago, I was reaching for a cup off the top shelf, and another one fell, oh. and <laughs> caught it. Oh, so that's it? Checks okay. out. Man, okay. Well, hey, I, I like your confidence, plus man, every two other, days ago, you looked like you were about to kill yourself. Plus every other week. <laughs> <laughs> every other deep, every other week, I do that test where you let something fall and then you grab it. Nice. Yeah. And my reflex time is still the same as when I was eighteen. Oh, you got oh. it. All right, he's got it. He still yeah. got it. You still got it. Here, toss that sucker back without breaking a light. Okay. Man. Okay. Well, so three fifteen is hammered down. No, three fifteen is the vlog. Yep. Three thirty. Have will you be been hammered running down. the vlogs lately? The last couple weeks? No, we were on vacation, so I missed two Fridays in a row, actually. Okay. So now they're. Back and so this today. blog will this cover a couple weeks or no, just? No, this is just last week. Last week recap, pretty much. What all happened last week? Uh, we went to SmackDown. Pat rocked Pat. out. Oh, Pat teabagged uh, Michael mm -hmm. Cole, right? No, that was a couple weeks ago. This is the one where he sat and got his feet washed with Big E. Yeah, what was that about? 
Patties, bro. Yeah. Just, is that what they do? Like, is that Biggie's thing? Yeah. I, I yeah. don't think so, but I think in the moment, it probably just felt right. Yeah. Hey, I don't. I don't want to bring up anything <laughs> negative or whatever. But did a wrestler get in trouble? What? Last week, oh, two weeks no. ago. Yeah. Oh no, you're DUI. talking about. The I just saw, okay, it's DUI, right? Okay, I didn't know. I, I saw it mugshot. That's all I saw. I didn't know what happened. Thoughts and prayers. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he's all right. Right? Everyone's okay. Yeah. Am I missing something here? No, I'm no, always in the no, dark. No, no. Yeah, it's it's not his first one. Oh, really? Yeah. Repeat offender. Yeah. yeah. The big goose. The big. So is he connected to Roman Reigns? Yeah. Yes, I, he is Roman Reigns. I'm just gonna stop then. I don't. I got a lot of respect for Roman Reigns. Yeah, he played football at Georgia Tech. Yeah. You know that? He did. You Morgan Burnett played with him. My buddy. You know where played, played football? Yeah, Hofstra. University of Iowa, baby. Did he really? Goddamn right. <laughs> what position? Oh, D tackle. <laughs> did he? He looks good. D tackle or D end? He looks know. good, man. I hope everything works out for him. Who made this shirt right here? This football shirt. I don't think get a. Uh, Who do you uh, think? So Connor, that's Connor's little spot with all the all his <laughs> all of his gear. Mm-hmm. What's the little tro- troll thing doing right there with the hat and the beard? I don't know. I think someone may have sent that to him. I mean, oh, this thing. Yeah, I've never noticed this. This guy right here. What happened to the club VIP side? He took it down the VIP lounge. I tell you what, Connor is a polarizing creature for people <laughs> because. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times people yelled at me when I was in Tahoe. Like, Connor is a scumbag. Or they say, is Connor really a scumbag? Like, <laughs> so many people threw that out there. And a lot of people were asking about you guys. Everyone said, Where's, when are Pat and the boys coming out here? I was like, oh, hopefully next year, man. And then people were like, yeah, they got so juiced. I'm like, I don't know for sure. But they told me that if Pat wants to play, hopefully he gets the invite, which I'm sure he would, he would kill it, man. Would you guys come out? I would. I would love. You would have to. to. That would be awesome. I've been to Tahoe once, and it's definitely in the top three of favorite places I've ever been to. Yeah, I, I tend to forget that they make places like Tahoe. That there are places like Tahoe, and then I get back to them like this is just the site, like everything, the mountains. It's not. It's it's so foreign to me. Gumpy, where you grew up in Canada? You say it was like Seattle. Yeah, close to Seattle. Very similar? It's like all similar wa- mindset? All, all water everywhere, yeah. Was it hard to come back and forth across the uh, border back before COVID? Or could you just cruise on in whenever you want? No, very much not. Canada's still kind of, they're kind of just coming out of I mean, luck. before COVID, though, you could go back and forth easy, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd usually do like a month here, a month at home. Really? Yeah. Where would you stay in America? Uh, usually just on uh, Zito and Foxy's couch. Oh, you mean when you were coming? I mean, like if you just cross into Seattle, for you ever just go stay? Oh, in Seattle? Seattle, yeah, I'd always take go. Take the clipper just, over. Just take the clipper. You can take a you can take a boat from my where I live downtown to downtown Seattle, two and a half hours, just rips right across. It's long. Bit of a runaway, eh, Paul? Yeah, they got a bar on there downtown to downtown. And would you do? Would you use that in the same day? Like ride that in the morning and go home at night? No, I'd stay for like the weekend. Two and a half ride. hour boat ride. It rips, though, man. I mean, still, you're two and a half hours. What Goes if it's by quick choppy? when you're rinsed. Well, you can either <laughs> yeah, full bar, you either friend. do that or you drive for, and you have to drive across the border, which is a pain in the ass always, and it's like three and a half hours. And you still, if you drive across, you still have to take an hour and 45-minute ferry from Victoria to mm. Vancouver. So It's like Putin bay You ever go to Putin bay Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Putin bay you, you can ride the fast like charter or the slower one. And yeah. I Get think the, the fast, fast one's 40 minutes or Get so, the right? The scumbag capital of the world. I've never well, seen a place that. so scummy. It's a well, good time, but it is scummy. I went when I was in college with General Bob, and I remember. <laughs> oh yeah, geez, there you go. That's we pulled in in the hotel we were staying at. We walked in, and I was like, oh, "This is cool, man. It's cool." And I look, and it felt like spring break for older people. Yeah, spring break for people my age now, like age thirty-five to fifty. They were having spring break, and I was in college. And I was like, "Wow, this is pretty intense." Like, and I was. I was in that mindset of, yeah, we're, we're going to go. And these people were out, way out doing me. These people are like 40 years old, killing it. Man, I wonder if it's still like that. Tony and I went a couple years ago, yeah. way before we started working here. And uh, was, as we were checking in, probably the same hotel, we stepped over an unconscious man in the hallway <laughs> who was bleeding half in, half out of the elevator. Like the door was just kept shutting on his Dude. unconscious body. Did you ever think to like nudge him or see if he was alive? No. no. Yeah, Tony soccer kicked him in the head as <laughs> hard as he could. <laughs> I don't know if they did it when you went, but at the, at the pool bar, they would serve these big, giant Ohio State O's. Really? And it was, I don't know, I think it was five gallons of liquor. Like a fishbowl situation? Yeah. yeah. But it was, it was, it was, it had a uh, lid and, a, and you drank out of a straw. 
But you had one or two of those, and that was pretty much good for the, the day or really? two. Yeah. Yeah, fish bowls were big when I was in college. I don't know if you guys had fish bowls. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we did. With COVID, kids were probably scared to death to try a fish bowl because you'd have one fish bowl and seven straws <laughs> in there, and you'd have 27 different people come test your fish bowl out. Oh, yeah. Saturday we night, yeah. Liquor pitchers. Yeah. yeah. So you very call fond of those. Yeah, like seven or eight straws. and. Oh, boy. We it's used to, in safe. the bar, just put them on the ground and then hold the guy's legs up, and he would <laughs> suck it out of the straw upside mm-hmm. down. Do like a keg stand with your fish bowl? Yeah. You boozed up quicker. You're sucking it through a little baby straw while you're upside down? Mm-hmm. Dude, that seems kind of difficult. Got you drunk. I was just going to ask you a question, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I just censored myself. I just held Good myself back in a different way that you could consume that alcohol. I'm not even going to talk about it. I was it. wearing you know a cup, what? so no, I didn't put it in. Well, no, some people I, I have heard, don't they like soak things? Like I've heard young kids, because they don't want booze on their breath, they'll like soak tampons and put them inside them. Oh, yeah. No, I never did that. You guys ever try that, honestly? No. no I, no. I would not no. recommend that for anybody <laughs> out there who's watching. Oh, I know it's over time. people get alcohol poisoning. Exactly. It sounds very dangerous, right? But they said like high school kids doing it. This all scares me because they're all things I potentially think about issues for kids that I'm raising. <laughs> I don't want them being around those people. Four Locos came out when we were in college. Mm-hmm. We didn't need to resort to that level. We, we were pretty well taken care of. Who was the snitch with Four Loco? Who ruined it for everybody? Where they had to change the formula? The kid whose heart exploded <laughs> after he drank three of them in one night. Blood was seeping out of his eyeballs. Is that yeah. Diggs? Diggs can't have caffeine now, can he? Because of Four Locos. <laughs> is it really? It's a dangerous combination. Wait, did you go to the four hospital? Lo- four Locos and Adderall. Yeah, the next day I did. Did you really? Mm-hmm. For what? You have heart palpitations? I, I was eating at a local Mexican restaurant, and my heart was going... 197 miles an hour. So you got scared? Yeah, my friends were like, because I was like ghostly white, and they felt my chest, and they're like, that's not right. So we went to hospital. So it was a carryover from all the caffeine and booze from the night before? And what did they say at the hospital? Uh, They actually did some tests in there. I do have something, but nothing like bad. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. (laughs) Smoke a Marlboro Light, you'll be fine. (laughs) You do have something going on with your heart, but you wouldn't worry about it? Yeah, correct. I wouldn't either. Should be good. Yeah, we're fine. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. Good, I believe you. Because I, I know Ty had 27 feet of his intestine taken out, right? <laughs> That's right. Did you really? I mean, not 27 like Brock feet. Lesner. Didn't Brock Lesnar have the now same he or had, colon? Uh, diverticulitis, I think. Yeah, don't you have something like that? I have colitis. Mm-hmm. So you got some of your colon taken out? Tiny bit. No, not my colon. Small intestine. Yeah, so, okay. Large intestine. No, small intestine, yeah. How much? I think they said it was like eight feet or something. Are you? Jesus. No. Really? Yeah, it's the longest organ in your body, dude. There's a you lot eight in there. You feet taken out? Maybe it wasn't that much. I don't know. It was when I was younger. I'd have to... So do they say like, hey, this part is bad. We take this out and we're good? Yeah, there's like some blockage or something. Like, hey, this will make it... Small intestines, 22 feet. So it wasn't that one. I worry about you guys and your health. Gump, yeah. you're good? Uh... No, uh, sure. Yeah. Oh man, I shouldn't have, should not have dove into this. Mm-hmm. Everybody, Nick, you're good. I'm sure Nick is fine. Clean bill health. Nick's super That's healthy. That's good. Yeah, I actually. mean, Jay. Evie, Evie back there is yeah, good. All good here. Jay McIntyre is great. We know he's <laughs> Jay solid as a rock. Extra Bigger large health. pizza today in the back room. I saw him do it. So Jay, I promise you, will outlive all of us. Every single person, right? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Forty a of, max. A lot of pizza grease. Really. <laughs> Jay, you, I saw your studio here. back there. So Jay's making beats and music back there? Really? I, I haven't lately, but I do occasionally. I didn't know. Do you sing? No. Why not? Because I'm terrible. Jay was in a death metal band. Yeah. I was. Oh, what were you called? Uh, Outlined in Blood. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> was Billy the lead singer? Uh, no, it was a guy back in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Outlined in Blood. And what happened? You guys still together? Uh, no. It's kind of hard to play in a band in Pittsburgh and from Indianapolis. <laughs> Man, okay. Maybe, Creative maybe differences. They just, yeah, you know, they well, we, it out. You know, like egos get involved when you're in a band and all that stuff. But guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this sucker up. I'm gonna get back <laughs> on the road. I know we have uh, I know we have hammer down coming. We have a vlog coming at three fifteen mm-hmm, Eastern right. here mm-hmm. shortly. Monday we'll be back on the show. Mm-hmm. Saturday, please everyone reach out to Diggs. Let him know how awesome he is. How good of a, a <laughs> softball player he's gonna be. He's a stud baseball player. Maybe you cut off your sleeves. Maybe you do the double cut Thank off you. sleeves and the belly shirt, Hell so it's yeah. a double cut yeah. off like you wear in high school under your pants. Yeah. I'm sure you did. I'm sure yeah. Coach Coach Diggs. From what I've seen of him online, he might be wearing that in the stands. <laughs> he will. I love that guy. But, hey, guys, appreciate you. Everyone, thank you so much for, for helping. This has been fun. It's always fun to come back in here uh, and, and do this live and, and step out of my little tiny little attic that I, I usually broadcast from. Attic, but yeah. I, um, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody listening. Monday, Pat will be back in studio. Everything should be great. Obviously, I still don't know what camera I'm looking in. I don't know if it's this one. Yep, you got Evie, it. Evie, right there, Evie, yep. right in that one. <laughs> Sorry for uh, – 
saying Jay McIntyre. I know it's Jay McAfee. <laughs> it's fine. I don't mind. It's okay. I know. Jay, Jay can handle it. He's tough. But, guys, I appreciate it. Everyone, come back on Monday. We will uh, we'll have a great show for you. Who knows what's going to happen over the weekend? Who knows what kind of stories will break? But we're closer and closer to training camps, opening for the NFL. We'll have something to talk about every day, hopefully. It will be fun. I am AJ Hawk, sitting in for Pat McAfee on the Pat McAfee Show. We will see you Monday. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> <laughs>